Pat Shea. Could you stand up and tell um, everyone your name and your business, what you do, and yeah. All right, I'm Pat Shea Royal <laughs> of Royal Plus Styling. I'm a wardrobe stylist, I'm fashion stylist. I also have a women's accessory um, boutique online. Um, I just started my Royal Tees t-shirt brand prop top, um, body suits for girls only. I haven't thought about the yet, but <laughs> I've styled a lot of actors, actresses, hip hop, cupcake mafia. Um, I do creative directing. You name it, anything fashion, I do it. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everybody, so I'm Tari, I'm Naya. Hi Naya. Oh, and we have the audience who's there, <laughs> sales and talking about their business. See, I'm Tari, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Naya, I'm the owner of Naya Fashion Designs. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom, I will no longer be a stay-at-home mom starting in January, uh, and I'm interested in starting a mommy blog. So mm -hmm. that is why I'm here. It's not yet um, completed, but I'm in the process of working on it. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My name is, hello everybody, my name is Tina. Um, I do PR and promotions, currently working with Diane Diamonds and Wildlife. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Hi everyone, um, I'm PR and Everybody, I'm Sunday. Everybody call me Sunshine the Diva. <laughs> I have a fashion line called Divas and Diamonds. It's what I'm wearing. It represents life's pressure. Everybody go through life's pressure. No matter what life pressure brings you, we like a diamond. You're unbreakable. So it represents D and D lifestyle. So we also have a man line too in my fiance. Yes. Oh, I forgot. I'm a hairstylist across the street. If anybody needs a hair done, I've been doing hair for 19 years. <laughs> I'm Shay Sharice and I own Instagram New Vogue. I basically do fashion DIY stuff and I hope to be like a shoe designer one day. That's what I'm here. And she does design shoes. Not hoping she designs them. Thank you. See? Thank you. Thank you. I'm Shay's mom, I'm Cecilia, and I'm a nurse, and I'm just here to support Shay. <laughs> you are, mom. and I know who you are. <laughs> I have an Instagram page called The Well Dressed House, and I'm interested in um, learning how to start a blog for the next year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she played it down. She played it down. <laughs> Hey y'all, my name is Tara Seals. I am the owner and creative director of Body Decor Boutique. Um, I am also a self-published author of Bossy Is As Bossy Does, The Five Keys That Open Doors. And I'm starting a new venture starting January 1st. I'm the boss expert. So I basically assist people um, with everyday, everyday questions. I'm also an educator, special educator. Uh, dealing with kids with special needs all the way through kindergarten up to 68 years old. I've touched them in some way and talked to them. So with that being said, this venture starting in January will be very interesting as it's something new as I'll be um, providing expert advice on different areas that I'm an expert on. I don't talk about anything that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. So that's me, Tara Hills, Body Day Corporate Boutique. Hi, hi, I'm Alexis. Um, I'm visiting from DC. I'm close friends with Shay, they're like family to me. Um, I am a blogger. My blog is IamLexLuther.com. I have an Instagram page. I need to learn how to take it more seriously, and I eventually want to own my own production company. Mine doesn't really just stop at fashion. I'm a communications major, so I'm trying to take over the whole game. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm Destiny. Um, I'm working on Instagram, but I haven't taken it too seriously. And then I'm trying to open um, a beauty company um, starting next year, hopefully. I'm Alfred. I have a niece that sings, and I'm basically trying to get her apparel and 
merchant merchandise of the park. So that's why. Yeah. So when you had um. We're, while we're still waiting on one of our hosts, she said she's seven minutes away, um, I'm going to have everyone kind of go and talk about um, our panelists, give you a little bit of background story on them. Starting with Naya. Hello, everyone. My name is Naya. I'm a publicist and brand manager. So I work with all types of brands, fashion brands, I um, work for reality TV stars, singers, actors, all different entities of public relations. That's a little bit about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Talia Oliver. Some of y'all may see me as Talia O or the Closet Ratchet <laughs> on Instagram. I'm an editor for The Shade Room. I'm an author, public speaker, and a new mom. Oh, oh, new. He's a year old now, but still new. Still new. Still new. Still new. Um, <laughs> and and um, yeah, I also have a t shirt shop called Not Your Mother's Closet. Um, <laughs> Yes. And um, make one call stay out from Mother's closet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. Yay. Um, that's, that's basically what I do. I do a little bit of everything. All right. Awesome. Um, hi, everyone. I am Alicia Moore. I am the CEO and founder of I'm a Trendy Topic, a brand um, built for women that empowers women. I am a networker, I am a mom, I'm a grandmother, I am a, I am an author, <laughs> um, entrepreneur, I do a lot, I carry a lot of hats, so that's what I do. Alicia Moore <laughs> is uh, the owner of Hind the Trend Topic, which is a girl empowerment, well, not really a girl empowerment, but mainly girl empowerment. Um, website that you will start seeing a lot of different content come from um, and she put on this event today she wanted to bring us all together um, and she we kind of worked together to find the best panelists to give you guys the best information so um, guys give it up for Alicia Moore we couldn't be here for you guys should be taking lots of notes if you need paper I can get paper let me know if you got your phone either one take lots of notes because I think the things that we're going to talk about um, one, people literally pay me to coach them on just their Instagram. So this is like advice, like I'm gonna give like real analytic information as well as Talia, as well as Naya, as well as Simone, um, that can really help you grow. So really, really take it in because when I, one time, what I noticed from classes like this is like people listen and then they leave and they're like, did she say post at three o'clock or did she say post at four? And so, if you write notes, then you can refer back to them. So definitely um, take as many notes as possible. And we could, you could start with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. someone walking in. Okay. Okay, y'all. Okay, so we're going to start with Naya. And let me know if you can't hear me. Yes, because I got a big me. mouth. We can't hear you. I got a, it comes in levels. I have a mommy <laughs> mouth, the grandma voice, and then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know, right? Because we don't have to do what the mom have to do, you know? All but, right. but speak loud because we're recording again. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to go with Naya. Naya, can you just give us a little in-depth, I know you explained to us about you being a publicist, but mm -hmm. really what is a publicist? Okay, so I know a lot of people are always confused about what a publicist is. We are not an assistant. <laughs> we are not your manager. We are not your business assistant, your business manager. We aren't your go girl, your do girl, none of that. We're really your spokesperson and we're the person that connects your brand with the public. So we're in charge of how you know, you communicate your brand and how we execute your brand's vision to the public, to the media, to anybody who's not in-house and watching your brand. So that's my best definition for what a publicist is. I think that's a good de definition um, because when I look at publicists, I look at it as um, that's the person we always see that kind of put out the story <laughs> the right way or try to do damage control, you know, if, it, if it's an issue or, you know, put you how the world sees you. So, right. you know, I rely on my publicist a lot to make sure that I'm, you know, that we're seen the right way. So, great to have. But a lot of people get it confused, right? Yeah, a lot yes. of people, I when I first confused. start working with I clients, had it confused. I heard the publicist, had a, like my fifth month of business. I didn't even have a story. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I thought she was supposed to be my like public assistant. You yeah. know, like <laughs> right. See, you know, 
Well, you're in PR, PR so you yeah. have to set it. And one thing I want to say to you, I know you probably know, but you have to make it very clear, like, when you're in PR, like, hey, these are my duties. Like, go let them know. I'll make your press kit. I'll do your press release. I'll help you with your social media. I'll come up with your mission statements. I'll plan your events. What I won't do is I won't get you bookings. I won't, you know, I won't do yes, anything exactly. assistant related. So people do get it confused. Yes. Do. <laughs> um, we know with your experience in PR, what's the most important factor when it comes to getting in magazines? So even getting in magazines, getting on blogs, um, getting posted, like mentions, anything, it's all about the pitch. So you want to have a strong pitch. And people think that, you know, pitching is just sitting there sending emails all day so people know. You have to build relationships with the media like me. I literally make sure at least a couple times a month that I'm hitting. Like she know, like I, she she's the we editor for the so we always you know we work together a couple times. And I have a relationship. Like I can call her like, hey girl, you know how's baby? Or I can call her like, hey, like you know your shirt company's doing good. Like you have to keep these relationships because these are the people that are putting your stories out for you. And then it's like if you give bad vibes or if you don't have a relationship, you can send emails all day. That doesn't mean the editor is going to post what you send. You have to give them a strong pitch like, hey, this is, you know, why I think you should pitch this. Your message has to make sense. And it ha you have to think like the journalist. So you have to think what do their readers want to see. So I know if I'm talking to her and I'm like the shade room, you know, they like, you know, the tea or whatever. So if I have a story <laughs> about one of my clients and, you know, trying to, if they put something out and I'm like, no, I could, she could talk to you. She could tell you what really happened. Like she's going to be interested in posting that, you know, on her publication. So it's really just about getting in the head of what the reader wants to see and what the publication that you're going after, what their audience wants to read about. So the pitches the most important thing. Okay. Um, at what point in business do you think, because Skittle said it, um, that a person will need a publicist? So we have a lot of entrepreneurs in here. Yes. When do they need a publicist? <laughs> right. Okay. So one thing that a lot of, I'll start with music, because I told you guys I work with music, fashion, small businesses, corporations. I'll start with music. So having a product. Because everybody always says, I need a publicist, I need, you know, brand exposure. With what? What do you like? What am I yes. pitching? So you need to make sure that you're at a level where you have something for me to go publicize. Whether it's, you know, I know everybody's like working on their brand, but you have to be putting in work first. Like you have to have a product. Number two, what have you done on your own? I don't even work with people if I see that they're not doing nothing on their own. If I go to your social media and you're telling me you're coming at me, oh, I'm a singer, I need help, and I go to your Instagram, and I don't see no cover videos, no album projects, nothing. I'm like, are you really a singer? Like, what is this? Am I about to waste time, like, trying to build a brand? You, you're not working yourself. So that's what I look for. I look for what the product is, what the project is. I look for what you know um you're doing on your own how much buzz you've generated on your own before you come to me asking me for my help that if you have one two and three and you're, you're getting you know attention your phone is ringing people want to do business with you people are reaching out to you and you feel like you know hey people must really like my product or they must really like my project i want to gain more eyes i want to gain you know more listeners more readers more viewers then it's like, now I need a publicist because I want to reach a different demographic. Like, I want to, you know, reach the mass. So that's when you hire me, when you've done all that you can do because you got to do what you can do first. It's social media, it's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. A lot of this stuff, you can go ahead and generate your own buzz for, you know, whatever you're pushing. Like, you have to use social media to your advantage because that's, you know, the day and age that we're living in. But once you feel like you've done all you can do on Instagram, like, when you feel like, dang, like, I've been going hard and I still, you know, want to get this Essence feature. I still want to, you know, get this um, Forbes feature. How can I do that? Now you need a publicist. So that's when you hire one, when you've done all that you can do, when you have a product that, you know, you're ready for the mass to see. So. That, um, that right there is some good advice because mm -hmm. I think sometimes when we get, the, get a brand or you start a brand, you just wake up, you have an idea, you post it a couple of times on social media, um, people are hearing, a, you know, you talk to your five good friends, they you know, your good <laughs> jobs, and they all saying, you know, hey, that's, that sounds good, and then all of a sudden, you're reaching out to a publicist, and I need, I need a publicist, I need a publicist, and you don't have a product, you haven't, you haven't done anything. 
And if a publicist, and sometimes if you don't get a good publicist, somebody that's going to tell you, you don't have anything, you know, come in right. six months yes. after you've done, dot, X, dot, y, dot, X, you know, X, Y, Z, they'll be like, okay, let me go ahead and lock you in. Yeah, right. Take your money. I was just about to say. Yeah, take your money, and every month you're saying like, okay, but I haven't done this, or I haven't done that. I, you know, so these are definitely great tips because you don't want to just roll over tomorrow and say, right. I need a publicist. And like Naya said, you need to do your work. And one other thing I would say is when you do seek a publicist, make sure that you reach out to them like, hey, you know, show interest in a consultation with them. So sit down and let them, you know, talk to you and ask as many questions as you need because you'll be able to find out right then and there if that's the person you should work with or, if, you know, you think they can help you, whatever the case may be and some publicists like me you know we do charge transportation fees but even with that it's worth it you know what I mean because you sit and talk to me for an hour you can ask me anything you want to ask me and I'm going to sit there and answer and then you can even ask me well how would you you know what campaign would you come up with for this and I can tell you during our consultation if you feel like you know well maybe I don't need you that yet that's the time when you figure out Oh, excuse me. <laughs> That's the time when you figure out, like, oh, well, I don't have this, or I don't have this done yet, or, you know, I don't even have a website yet, or I don't even have, you know, inventory yet. Then it's kind of like, you don't need me yet. And I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll let you know, like, okay, get, do this, 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 and this. Because that's what I do in my consultations. If I feel like you're not ready to, you know, lock in an agreement with me, I'll let you know what you need to do. And then I'm like, come back and see me in three months after all this is done, and we can move forward. So don't get scammed out here because they'll try to take your coin. And, that's, you know? and this is especially why I had Naya on the panel because it's like me – Talia and someone we can tell you everything about social media right and then you felt like you built this platform like your Instagram famous and you don't really need a manager but you feel like oh I need a publicist and that was like me in the beginning because I come from the music background so with me coming from the music background I've always had a publicist so when I started clothing I didn't know that I didn't need I needed coaching on right. how to build the brand and sustain it to when I got a publicist it, the story could be pitched correctly because it was like, I think my first publicist was like $500 a month. Mm -hmm. And it was like coming out every month and I'm just like, well, what do you do? And, and me, I'm the type of person, like, I am very frugal on the money that I spend. So if you're talking about to give me in these magazines, you got to go get some paper towels for the store. <laughs> you got to be in the office folding t-shirts. And like, we kind of had a big falling out and it really made, it put a bad take taste in my mouth about publicists because I'm like all they do is take your money and then they try to get you and, but it was like no Skittles you didn't have the proper setup for her to do her job properly and I know that now I know that now I my biggest relationship with my publicists is the one I had the best story to tell like when I was fired from my brand two years you know a year, two years ago um when I'm putting out a new release, when I'm doing a new collaboration, like that's the best times when you know you can see your publicist help you grow your brand. But if you're not there yet and you just have a publicist on retainer, they 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 kind of feel bad every month too. Like yeah. we did, I did the work. You know, they, it's only so many emails they can send, right? But and and you guys both agree that publicists kind of get a bad rap. Yeah, for I, that. I know you get. I would definitely say that. And especially in Atlanta, like I hate to say that, but publicists in Atlanta, like people will tear you down. Luckily, I've been fortunate enough to where I think my reputation is pretty yes. clean in Atlanta. Yes. Like I've never heard anybody say like, "Oh, Naya tried to scam me," or you know, Naya didn't do her job. Like I'm pretty, but that's because I'm a hard worker. So like I care so much about my reputation, and you have to in PR, just like. You're a publicist, so just like you protect your client's reputation, you have to protect your own reputation too. So even if I know, like, okay, your retainer is X amount of money, and I'm not even supposed to do X, Y, and Z, I'm the type that will go overboard. Like, well, let me just get this done too, so it don't look like you know they looking crazy, which makes me look crazy. Right. But you got some publicists; they don't care. They'll just take your money and you know whatever, however. Yeah, like it. It just. <laughs> It just gets ugly, so it's just you have to keep a good reputation when you're a host. You have to work hard. You have to make your duties very clear. Like if you're looking to go into that field, just lay them out from the beginning and make sure you do everything by the book so that you know you protect yourself because your image is everything. Your client's image and your image. So you just want to make sure that you 
you keep everything clean, keep everything professional, and have an open relationship with your publicist. Like, you have to communicate with them. If you're not happy, let them know. Like, hey, I feel like what's getting done. Make them give you reports. Like, mm-hmm. I, a lot of my PR friends, like, they're like, what you doing? I'm like, I'm typing up this, you know, MAR, like this monthly activity report. And they're like, what's that? I'm like, you don't do monthly activity reports right. with your client. No, they don't require me to. Show them. You have to show them what you're doing. You know what I mean? Because like Skittle said, they'll be like, oh, you're not doing anything. And I'm like, oh, let me pull up this report. I did X, Y, and Z. You know what I mean? So you just have to. I think it's the way that you set the standard and the way that you just pretty much like how you deliver yourself as a professional when you're a publicist. I think all of that is good. Because I remember, and um, I, I have a couple more questions for you, but mm-hmm. I remember um, not doing my part. You know, you get signed with a, a publicist, they said they can get with your brand, they can do what they can do, this and yeah. that, but you also are on the other end of that phone making promises of what you will produce. Yeah. Right. And so for me, um, I, like I said, I'm an author, and I had another book that I needed to produce, and that's what we were supposed to be doing, mm-hmm. but I didn't meet my deadline. So I got dropped from my publicist, like my publicist was like, um, I'm gonna give you two months to do this, this and that, because I cannot take your money. Because right. you're, what are we doing? Like, but you're, you're not gonna meet month. many You're not gonna meet right. many people a, like that. Like that, the, the MAR report yeah. is a requirement. You should require someone Definitely. to tell you what they're doing and, and make it plain for you, because it has to make sense of why you're spending your money, Mm -hmm. what are you doing every single month besides running behind your own tail, you know, it has to make sense for you. So let me see it in black and white. Let me see it in paper because maybe I forgot what we did this month. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, you know, maybe you forgot that I was your client. So (laughs) let me know, you know, because they get a lot of clients and they can get overwhelmed. So just give me a report and let me check. Yeah, we did that. Check, check, check. And that. So um, another question we have for Unite is if, is it safe? Let's say you're um, you, you deal with a lot of music brands, mm-hmm. artists, um, different things, and I'm an author, or um, Skittles is a um, a clothing designer has a fashion fashion line. Mm-hmm. Is it safe to get the same kind of publicist that that is a music? Can they handle all brands? So you're saying not th- like not three people that are artists. Right. Like just- your main focus has been artists. Should I sound with you as a, as a publicist? It really depends on who the publicist is and what relationships they have. And you have to do your research as a client. So you need to research like, okay, I know they work with artists. So can they even, you know, do what I need them to do? Like, do they know the PR person for Barnes & Noble? Do they know the, how to get me an Amazon? Do they know how to schedule me, you know, like a book tour? Like. You have to do research and you have to ask them those questions and then you have to pretty much just see i would judge that based off of the proposal that they provide you me myself like i work in different entities but for instance like someone came to me recently it was a chef and she pretty much wanted to be like on food network and you know like that type of thing like wanted to be featured in different magazines for being a chef and i was kind of like mm-hmm. you know <laughs> like uh, not really my lane, so I let my clients know because I get people that approach me all the time asking me to do different things, but I know, you know, what my area of specialty is, so I know it's music, it's fashion, and then I do good with corporate brands as well as small businesses. But, for instance, if it's something like politics or, you know, food or anything like that, I'll let you know, like, hey, these are my, I'll, I'll share my list, like, right. my contacts. I'll share my list like these are the relationships I have these are some campaigns I've executed in the past you know if you want to work with me if you want me to you know do this I let them know hey this will be new for me but I know how to pitch like I'm an excellent pitcher so if you know how to pitch then it's like you can pretty much get things done but hey I don't have these relationships out the gate I think you just have to be honest me I would tell you straight up like I, I don't want to part of it and I refer you to you know like I know my girl you know Erica like she's good with um working with chefs so hey I'm gonna refer you to her but that just depends on who you get like wh- who you approach because some people's like yeah girl I'll you know like I got you and then it's like you got me where on my make me or you got me <laughs> You know, like in essence, or, or at all the free events on Eventbrite. Right. 
Right. Like, I had a couple sis that all they did was send me, oh, yeah. you need to be at this event. You need and to be at this event. And it's like, how does this relate to my brand? You know what I mean? So that's, you have to just yes. be careful. Consultations, I'm telling you, that's the best thing to do. Even before, some people, they'll go to PRs and they'll say, hey, can you give me a proposal? And then they'll sign an agreement or whatever. Like, people come to me like, hey, send over I'm like, we need to do a consultation so we can make sure. I need to know. You crazy. You need to know. Seriously. You know what I mean? So, I'm telling you, don't pass on them consultations. Yes. Even if you don't move forward, it's at least it's good that you got to talk to them and ask questions so you know how to move forward. So yeah. Did I answer the question? Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I know I said a lot. Okay, so uh, one of the questions is what are the key factors to winning with PR? Like really winning. Really winning, I would definitely say having an open relationship with your publicist. So making sure that y'all this is what me and my clients do. Like, when you first get in a meeting, you know how your publicist says, we're going to talk, like, we're going to have conference calls once a week. We're going to meet once a week. Like, they'll, you'll hear that a lot in PR. Me, I hold you to it. So it's kind of like every week, like, we need to be having communication, having, going through updates, going through a checklist, making sure things are getting done, making sure things are getting executed. Because I see so many times where it's kind of like, Somebody will hire a publicist and then it's like, I'm doing this, like, you know, like for the month and you just think they're doing it. And when you circle back, it's kind of like, well, did you really, what did you really do? Or did you, you know, did you do what you said you were going to do? So just have a communication with your publicist and making sure you guys are talking at least once a week so that you know what's going on. As well as, like I said, having that strong pitch, definitely like having a story, being, letting me know as much as possible. I should be your best friend. Like not in real life, but in work life, I should be your best friend. If you got drama, if you got a bad past, if you need, you know, crisis management or damage control, Tell me everything because what PR people hate, we hate to be blindsided. So if I'm over here pitching you as this old holy woman who, yeah. you know, girl boss, girl boss, and then somebody come back and retract like, oh, but she was, she rolled up on, she pulled up on such and such and got in a fight over, you know, some guy for some and some and I'm like, how are we doing woman in power? <laughs> you, you know, you got this story. So just being open so that when, you know, you're on the same um, page with the pitches. Yeah. I think that's like a key way to win, mm -hmm. having that relationship with your publicist, having a strong pitch, and then also maintaining relationships. So like when my clients, when I get you features, I make them repost. Like you're going to say thank you at Elle Magazine and at the editor, like, you have to do that so people will want to, you know, work with you and want to know that you're kind. And then I also, like, the key to winning in PR is just making sure that the image stays clean. Like, I, none of my clients, like, if they have bad reps or people say they got bad attitudes, you have to check them. Like, just because they're paying you, like, you can't let them do whatever they want to do because they, at the end of the day, their reputation is your reputation. So just getting them in line, like, hey, you have a really bad attitude today. We're about to go do this public speaking engagement. So I'm going to need you to fix your attitude and, you know, walk in here like you got some sense. Like, you just have to be on your client, like, cause, and just remember, like, their representation of you. You know what I mean? So your representation of them and their representation of you. So just having that relationship and those pitches. two and a half years ago to pursue music and acting and entertainment. There was nothing in Dallas for that field, so I came here. Um, the first year was hell. I met Skittles about a year and a half ago. She's my manager, my music manager. Um, and um, I just came out here and started rolling. So I'm glad I moved to Atlanta and I do music. I'm into comedy now, so I'm doing stand-up comedy and acting. So that's the path I'm on right now. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I laugh at her videos all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks. So, all right, so you ready? Yeah, let's oh, get it. We're ready. Okay. What made you start venting on <laughs> Instagram? That was actually an accident. So Instagram, y'all know back in the day, Instagram was only pictures. Mm -hmm. And then it went to 15 second video. Right. I was like, oh, I can make videos now. So at first it was just like, hey y'all, Instagram got video, what y'all doing? Like just talking to the camera, but it started to turn into comedy on accident. I was just talking to the camera, venting. If a nigga made me mad that day, I'd be like, y'all, so ladies, have you ever, or have you ever just relatable stuff that I was going through? It wasn't meant to be comedy. Mm -hmm. So, um, I re recently just started calling myself a comedian only in April, and that's because of Wild and Out. After I was on Wild and Out, I was like, I guess I am a comedian because I was on Wild and Out. So I, I just recently gave myself that title. But at first, the venting was just my personality, just on social media, posting relatable videos, and it just happened to turn comedic. So, okay, so what we gonna say? Yeah, was the fuckboy video the first? Venting. No, uh, and that's the thing. The fuckboy video was last last <laughs> summer, and I had been doing those videos for two years prior. The fuckboy video, I thought I went viral before, but that showed me what viral was. I was like, oh, these videos are everywhere. No, they weren't. The fuckboy <laughs> video was the first video that was everywhere. It was unbelievable. It was it was on my timeline every time I scrolled. I'm like, all these people are posting it, you know? <laughs> and celebrities and just random people. So that was the definition of going viral for me. So that was the first video that got mostly noticed, but I had been doing it before that. So yeah. All right. So I guess, well, we have one we'll here say, how did you go viral? How did I, it was the fuckboy video. video. Yeah. yeah, which is crazy. Cause I wasn't gonna post it cause that damn bun was so ugly. <laughs> I was like, my head is so big and this bun looks like a fucking acorn on the top of my head. <laughs> I was like, why did I even think to record this video? But I recorded it because right before that video, I called the guy I was dating. He promised me he was gonna do something for me, per usual. He didn't come through and he didn't do it. And I was in my feelings. So I was like, you know, I just started ranting. I've been. And um, in my videos, it's usually 99.9% .9 of my videos are one take. Some people do the videos and takes and it's like cuts, which is fine. That's just not my style because I want it to be, it's real raw improv. I'm just talking. Whatever comes out in that one minute, it's usually what you're gonna get. If I don't like something at the end, but I like something at the beginning, I'm like whatever, like that's what I said, I'll just post it. So that fuckboy video was literally just how I felt in that moment and it was crazy. I was like, oh my God, I'm <laughs> It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah, it was everywhere. And, and it's crazy that you, you say that because we do dumb stuff. Like, I don't, I'm not going to post that. I'm not going to say that. But yeah. I've done some dumb videos, like stupid videos that people, that I would say is stupid. <laughs> yeah. And why are you showing this part of your life? But people enjoy it because it brightens up their day. And it may be just what they're thinking, just didn't know how to say or it. Or just didn't want to say <laughs> it. Or just didn't, yeah. yeah. just didn't want to say it. And so I, I remember having this video where I was running through the house because it was summer. And, you know, and like I said, my children are pretty grown. Like my daughter will be 23, 20. They're, they're old. And so when the summer comes, they think that means sleep all day mm -hmm. in my house. Like all day. Air conditioned piping like all day, like five o'clock. <laughs> they don't get up till about about five o'clock, and they looking like what, what's to eat. So I started following FPNL, which is Florida Power and Light for us. I started following their guidelines. They said in the daytime, put the air on seventy eight. Keep your light bill down because you gonna stay home the whole summer and run the light bill up. Mm -hmm. So I turned the air on seventy eight. My son was he woke up thinking that it, a tsunami, something, a heat wave came through the house. They were running through the house, and I was running through the house with my camera, you know, <laughs> laughing at them because they they couldn't sleep. So and people found that entertaining, like right. very entertaining. It's and my relatable. children were upset. Mm -hmm. Like they were <laughs> upset because I had the phone all in their face. Like look, look, they're sweating. They couldn't sleep. They were up early. My son, who never likes to go anywhere with me, he always want to be in the house. He was up the next day because I was doing that all week. He was up the next day. As soon as I was ready to leave the house, he was ready. Because <laughs> he knew air conditioning was going to be in the truck. So, right. So what, are, what do you think some techniques are for 
someone to like not that you can really plan to go viral mm -hmm. but when it comes to your content on your page like there are videos that you may record that you just like no nah, i'm not gonna post it yeah. or oh not for today you might yeah. say what are some techniques that you think they should write down or do when they're thinking about how to make a product go viral or how to make a video or whatever they're doing go viral yeah, like she said, you can't really plan to go viral. Most of my viral videos, I look like a foot. I look crazy. I'm like, y'all didn't like the video where I spent an hour on my face with the contour and the wind and, and the I'm always yelling at her. She's like, you look so crazy. It's everywhere. I'm like, I know I didn't do my makeup. I didn't think anybody was going to like it. She's like, fuck, do your hair. <laughs> All the videos that are viral, I look insane. And then people see me, they're like, oh, you're the I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's <laughs> gone. But my point is, you can't plan to go viral. I, do, I have no idea what some videos I'm like, this is going to hit. Like, oh, Nicki Minaj going to be posting this one. Her song <laughs> playing in the background. No, she's not. <laughs> you know, it, it didn't do anything, actually. Come on. So the ones you really think are going to be funny and lit and everybody's going to like this, it's like, LOL, next. The ones that are just like, whatever, those are the ones that. So my point is, don't pass on anything. You just have to put all that content out there and let the universe do its thing. Whatever works, works. And when you see what starts to work, follow that. I know the ranting works. I know relating to women works because I'm speaking for women. I'm ranting, I'm yelling and doing all that stuff that they might want to do but they can't do because they're in corporate or they have kids. Or I can't post no fuckboy video. My son follow me on Instagram. You know, so I'm speaking for a lot of people. So a lot of women like that. And I like to relate to women and bond with women because I'm a woman. So I continue to do that. Why? Because it works. So try different things, but when you see what works, kind of follow that lane. Like my heart is music. I've been doing music for 15 years, but comedy is why people follow me. So <laughs> with that being said, okay, what's gonna bring in the bag? Let me focus a little bit on this stand up. Let me focus a little bit on wilding out. Let me focus a little bit on that. And once that takes off, that's what people like. I can spoon feed them the music. You know what I'm saying? But whatever people like that you're giving them, focus on that and then, you know, keep going with that. So continue to put out content that you notice a return in views or likes or posts, whatever that is, continue to put out content like that. And I'm gonna piggyback off of that because that's a really good important fact because I was a rapper at the time and like I was on tour with everyone you could think of, like everyone that's Nicki Minaj, T.I. <laughs> Everyone you can think of, up. I do. But everyone, when I did music, was like, you're so fashionable. Oh, can you style me? Like, even with Trina, like, I did a lot of styling for Trina. I did a lot of styling, you know, for Missy Elliott. This is, like, during my rap career. And, like, my brother, Shadi Lowe, he was like, you need to do what people are willing to pay you for. Like, you have to beg to get in the studio, but people are, like, paying you to style them. So why are you doing that and I'm like because I really want to be a rapper like <laughs> and so he he told me move to Atlanta like really really pursue fashion so that's how I got into this whole lane that's how I really decided like maybe he's right like maybe I'm not the best rapper and I really need to do this music and so sometimes it's okay to find that thing in yourself where you're like I really want to do this but people want me to do this and it's cool because you'll eventually end up falling in love with it once you do it I can't imagine rapping now <laughs> Every she's actually really, really good and she sold out shows if y'all google do <laughs> <laughs> no. I deleted everything <laughs> next question <laughs> it's crazy um, but you answered the question the next question what, well we have what What was the moment that you knew you could do this as a career mm -hmm. um, when I started getting paid <laughs> <laughs> Those viral videos been a long time. I, I'm a licensed cosmetologist, so when I moved out here, I was doing hair. Hair R S salon out in Little Five Points. I was there. I just stopped working there part time four months ago. So I've only been doing entertainment full time, like endorsements, um, brand stuff, uh, deals with random um, companies, only for. Um, <laughs> But I've only been doing it for four months. So up until four months ago, I would consider myself a licensed cosmetologist. I had to do hair to make money. So now four, I'm four months in. I'm not rich by any means. I ain't made it yet. But I'm stable enough to, to live my current lifestyle with all social media. 
Either I'm getting a check from music, Spotify spins, or I'm getting a check from um, endorsements, promoting brands, or um, just uh, deals with all that digital, or whatever is coming in, it's all entertainment. So once that happened, I was like, okay, it's really moving and becoming my career. I am actually, I consider myself an entertainer now, because I don't have to do hair anymore. So once you start making money, that's when you know you can kind of, you know, push the, the hustles, other hustles to the side. But if you can't live off of it yet, don't let that hair salon go or working at Sprint or whatever, you know, your day job is. Keep doing that in the midst of the hustle. That's good. Yeah, go ahead. Um, because when I met Simone like a year and a half ago, like I, from social media, we had, my social media manager had called her in to do a photo shoot. And so I was like, okay, who's this girl? Like, you know, the day before I'm just looking at her, like, oh, okay, she's funny, she got on her and so automatically, I'm like, oh, she's probably going to be, like, too bougie, and she probably has it all together, you know, let's organize things, let's make sure the rack is, you know, proper. She showed up. I was like, hi, bitch! Yeah. <laughs> I love y'all, so y'all got some cupcakes? She's like, okay. Yes, and I, and I found out, I'm like, oh, who's your manager? You know, do you have an agency and all this? She's like, uh, what? I barely, like... My car still rolls the yeah, windows I, down. I still have that car. It's not 18. We're going to have No, my car. You already know the truth. Girl, they're rolling off. <laughs> Next year. So, it's got to be the year. Please. I had to. <laughs> right, seriously. You've got to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so she was still working. Like, she was still working, and we had to find that balance. And the reason I'm telling you guys this is because, in the midst of you guys working, in the midst of school, Simone still had to find the balance because her bills had to get paid. And at that time, social media wasn't paying her bills. She was viral and she had lots and lots of followers, but social media wasn't paying her bills at the time. And what do you, how did you transition to that? Like now, you know, we see checks come in all yeah, the time. Yeah. We have endorsements coming in all the time, things of that nature. People are paying for ads, but how, I think it was a big switch. Like consistency, yeah. mm -hmm. what were the things that made it to where you're a brand now and not just the Instagram. And that switched over. Like, once I noticed, like, okay, I have all these followers. I'm verified. Uh, you know, you see those posts like, y'all just popping on Instagram. I would read those posts like, fuck, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> you girls popping on Instagram, but ain't got, I'm like, God, that's me. Like, how can I transition all these followers, all this fun, this, how can I transition this into money? You know, and that's where she came in a lot. She was like, okay, now you see your value. Once you notice your value, like, hold up. I can sell a couple shirts for this brand or because I'm vegan and I was really drinking the tea for a whole year and it worked, I can endorse this brand that I use and I have followers that want to be vegan like me or want to lose tummy fat or whatever and really tell them the truth about this product and they love me so they're going to trust me to buy this tea. Whatever, whatever you're selling, but Skittles helped me with that. We reached out to brands. Once she noticed my value, once you notice your value and you realize you can sell this product, you can reach out to brands also. That's where your PR, your manager comes in. You know, we reached out to tons of brands. Um, we would DM them, email them, send out a press kit, show them what I could do for them. And then uh, it just equated to dollars. And it started to roll in Skittles. I always say this because we signed with the tea company. I was so excited to get my little first endorsement. I'm like, okay, they want one post for X amount of dollars. She's like, no, they need to sign a contract for three months. F that one post, you need to be good for the next three months. If they want to work with you, we're going to make them sign for three months instead of you They you put one post and if for God forbid you don't bring them any sales, they don't want to work with you again. So she, you know, once you get those larger contracts or more longevity, it's like, okay, instead of me being, for, being good for the next three days, I'm good for the next three months. And then, you know, you figure out another hustle. But um, just when you know your value, you can approach these brands. Because you know what you can bring to the table. You know you can sell a product. Or my lips are big and plump and I always do the red lip. If a lip line comes to me, oh, I always wear that red lip. I know I can sell that. My followers love that on me. Whatever it is. But you just have to know your value too. And I think you need to get somebody on your team that is willing to overvalue you. For sure. Because I literally keep a gun on me because I might shoot her at any time. Any time. <laughs> because she will call me and be like, Okay, I just signed this contract um, for don't kill me, but for this. And I'm like, no, no, no. And I have to call them back and was like, oh, her phone got stolen. <laughs> Somebody signed it. <laughs> to renegotiate the contract because sometimes we as ourselves, we don't see 
that value. Even with my branding firm, when I first started, I was like, okay, I'll do your branding for $500. The girl that I tried to find literally drove me crazy. I'm like, I did this for $500. Why? Yeah. I talk to you five times a day. You're making me go crazy. Like, I don't eat. You know what I'm saying? The people that pay you the least will always be your biggest headache. They will want the most out of your life. So sometimes you need that friend, even if it's, you know, even now, my fiance, he'll hear me doing my coaching calls and the girl will be like, oh, I need a website, I need this and I need that. And she's like, yeah, but I'm a single mom and I'm this. And I'm like, okay, well, he's like, no, go up, go up. Yeah. Like, no, because I already know you. The, tomorrow you're going to be like, oh my God, I did this. This girl is stressing me out. He's like, no, do not keep taking that. And so that's the same with Simone. Because she's so compassionate and so relatable, promoters and her friends and things like that will hit her up and be like, oh, hey, I got a big opportunity for you. And it's like, Simone is the big opportunity. Yeah, like, right. no. And not to cut her off, I would just be too nice. You got to get somebody that's going to, you don't have to be the bad guy. Find somebody to be the bad guy for you. Because yes. I, it, whether it's a friend or a homegirl, like we had a pop-up shop here and I was walking around buying everybody's stuff. And Skittles was like, you don't have to do that. I'm like, no, I want to buy their stuff. Or I'm just always trying to like hook my friends up. In, in, in the business, you can't. You can't do that. Or if I know somebody, hey, you remember a year ago you did my party? Can you do it again for free? I'm like, yeah. And the Skittles is like, no. <laughs> like, yeah, I can do it. You know, so find, if you don't want to be the bad guy, find yes, somebody to do that for you. Because I say yes to everything. And I say yes. I, 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 I bet, I'm better, though. Yes, because she knows <laughs> she don't have to deal with me. Right. So right, I think I'm better. Especially with online brands and, you know, publicists and, 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 and styling, especially. Mm -hmm. You have to find someone that you can, <laughs> that can say, oh, you know, like for, as an artist, before I, when I lost, left my management, I was like my own assistant. And Simone does it now too, because sometimes I get really busy and she'll just, she'll know what I wanted to say in that email. Yeah. So she'll email them back for me. But sometimes you have to be your own assistant. So you got to step outside yourself. You say, okay, I'm Skittles, but what would Mary say in this email? All right, I'm going to email, hi, this is, you know, um, Mary's assistant, and unfortunately, she's not able to take that gig for 150. But if you're able to work it out for 500, you know, I love to sign with you guys and things of that nature. So it doesn't look like Skittles is the bad person, and then they're gonna try to negotiate you down. Whereas it's like, well, we really can't get to her, so we kind of have to work with this Mary person. You get what I'm saying? So, sorry. No. <laughs> I mean, this is all good information. Y'all yeah, yeah. agree? Yes. Yes. Right, because it, it is true. You do devalue. We are always giving um, discounts. Yes. Yeah. We're always breaking things down. And we talked about that last night because once you don't value yourself, believe me, they'll go the same thing that you're going to tell your friend and the same product that you're going to sell your friend and maybe even better. They'll go down the street and pay $1,000 for it from somebody that they don't know, but because they saw them on Instagram, and then you have the better product, but you're, you're their friend. They don't value, you know, they don't value you. So you need someone like uh, a Mary or a Miss Skittles that send that email, because even in this short period of time, some things I'm like, well, I want to do this, and I think, of, I think we should do this, and what about this? And she's like, hold up. You don't need to do all that, you know, because you're so used to giving and putting out so much when it doesn't even take all of that and you're take, being taken advantage of. And at the end of the day, you stand out and you're like, but what did I get out of that? So, um, and, a, that and a quote to remember, like we all have went to the club and I remember when my manager was a promoter and he used to always, it, it, it stuck out to me, this one girl. She used to be at the club every week, right? And she would be like standing in line, you know, we did like bring a bag of Skittles, get in free, or bring this, get in, you know, whatever. Bring a flyer, get in free. And she was always in the free line. And then one week out of nowhere, she just showed up in the VIP line. And my manager like, what you doing in the VIP line? You always in the free line. And so you kind of have to think about that with your brand. If you're always on in the free line, no one will ever consider you VIP. So if you're always out there, if you always just, you know, easily to access or easily, oh yeah, I got you, I'll do it for you, I'll do it for you, then you'll never be considered special in that person's head. I had to get Simone out the clubs, mm -hmm. going with her friends, because her friends are socialized, they get free sections, you know, so they invite Simone, and it's like, Simone, we can't keep you in the club if people are going to pay you to be there. So that's a thing you can, and you don't even have to think about it for the club, you can think about it for everything you do, like, if you, if your mom or cousin always borrowing money from you, Eventually, you're never going to be able to say no because you continue to do it. So, 
just, you know, learn to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we're learning, we're learning <laughs> to say no. So I have a question just for anyone, anyone can answer this question. What are your favorite three apps on your phone? Ooh, your favorite three apps, and anybody can answer. Mm -hmm. Just I love <laughs> Instagram's my favorite app. Um, I love Facebook and I love um, Photogram because I'm able to customize all sorts of things. I mean, I'm all, those are the three apps I'm on the most between work, my social life, and um, you know my business. But. What what is like a secret app that like or like an app that you know might help oh. that you might have on your phone? Y'all gotta get word sweat. Okay, word sweat. Yeah, I love word sweat. It's five ninety nine for one time. Well, I got it for one ninety nine, but I've been on word. I know that I am. Now everybody knows. Right. It went up. If they done went up to five ninety nine, I was like, ooh. But um, yeah. So word sweat. You can make logos. I'm telling you, you can make logos and word sweat. They'll make PNG files. You can make posts, like just simple posts. Like if you want to say looking for models, or if you want to say looking for interns, contact me. It's pretty much like you can make your own flyer with that app. Um, also, any bloggers in here? Did anybody say they were a blogger and wanted to start a blog? Okay. So my media, that's an app where you can pretty much like save content that you see on Instagram. So you can download that and you can download, you know, whatever video so that you can repost it without it saying repost by, you know, you know yeah. if you want to add like, you know, write this down so I can see on Be sure to write it down because I'm over here like I can't download it. <laughs> So yeah, definitely my media, that's a good one. Word swag is a good one. Those are all apps that I use um, daily. I'm trying to think. Canva is another one like that. Yeah, oh yeah, I love Canva. I don't use the Canva app. I use Canva on a computer. But both are great. Yeah, I love Canva. It's C-A-N-V-A. Yeah. <laughs> Those are like my favorite ones. And then like for like management type of things, like I love Hootsuite just because you can schedule, you know, when you want to set the post on Facebook, Twitter. Um, can you say that name again, please? Hootsuite is H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E. Um, I'm trying to get to more. That's how you schedule, you know, tweets. A personal assistant in an app. It, it, <laughs> There's 17 things it does. It'll send emails, it'll make what? social media posts, it'll oh, wow. it does I think it does something with like your taxes or something, helping you That's a lot. It's called 17 Hex. Yes. A lot of 17 what? Another app that you guys can uh, use that I use on my clients is Plan P L A N N because I work with a lot of social media um clients and some and everyone's analytics are different so uh, someone may need to be posted like I have a teacher client that has a teacher brand they need to be posted in the morning versus um I mean their and their post times are 7 30 5 30 and 8 30 and then I have another client who's their um like a social drinking um company and so they only post at night so like 5 30 7 30 9 o'clock is when they post so plan helps you so it'll come up on your phone and says time to post and so it helps me remember that to text my social media managers and making sure they're posting up all our clients so plan is a really good app to have i don't have any cool apps like that but i will ask a question <laughs> are y'all do y'all like instagram or facebook more instagram. raise your hand if you like facebook more <laughs> That's a problem. I'm still old. Y'all have got to get on Facebook. 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 It doesn't matter what your brand is. Y'all have got to get on Facebook. I just started learning that, and I'm, my Facebook is growing now. It is imperative. I love Instagram. I don't even understand Facebook. I'm like, what is this? I, I feel like an old lady on me. It's such a boring app to me. But Facebook, y'all focus on your Facebook. Grow that Facebook. You're gonna read, reach a whole different demographic on there that's not on Instagram. Y'all have got to focus How on these. How do you say that the two are different in terms of audience? -wise? People, uh, uh, Facebook's a little order. Facebook people are gonna spend money. I was just about to say. They at home all day looking at. They're at work on Facebook. They're right. just. 
Facebookers. Instagram yeah. is just a picture. So she right. cute. She cute. Yeah. They go and buy stuff, but Facebook spends money. There's a um, y'all know Country Wayne, the comedian. Mm-hmm. He um, he went viral on Facebook. But um, I started reading his story and everything. He said I don't make no money off Instagram. Facebook. Those are the people that are selling out his shows. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He has three million followers on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Facebook people spend money. They on the computer all day at work in their little cubicle <laughs> on Facebook looking for stuff to buy. They just it's like a, a whole world. What can I, yeah, yeah, the yeah. reason why Oh she's like, I'm a Facebook. Uh, I know. <laughs> I mean I I love the age demographic. The age demographic. Is different. They're like, not children. My children yeah. told me that I'm old because I'm on Facebook. Facebook. So mm-hmm. I started going to Instagram more. Yeah. And now I told Skittles the other day, my Facebook followers act like they don't want to talk to me anymore. Like, I'll post now and get 17 likes. Like, I, I usually get three, 400, you know, yeah, likes on you my have stuff. To stay. So I, I, I'm learning to, and I'm glad I'm going to go back to Hoops. Who, 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 because it posts for all your social yeah, media everything. for you at one time. So you don't have to be, oh, let me log on here, let me log on here, let me log on here, you know, and you can keep the analytics. And then yeah. a co-sign for what um, Simone said, Facebook, I love Facebook. One, it's easy to share. Like, you can oh, share yeah. things oh, way yeah. more easier on Facebook than Instagram. Yeah. Like, Instagram, yeah. a lot of people are funny about their Instagram because it's like, oh, like, I don't want to post this for too long. For sure. I don't want to keep this up. Facebook, you can literally share, like, reshare it to your timeline. It'll stay up there forever. You can, you know, send people stuff on Facebook. Facebook is just, it's so much you can do with Facebook. It's like the perfect free marketing tool. Mm-hmm. So I definitely agree with what you're awesome. saying. It's a huge Y'all platform. Y'all gotta focus on Facebook. One of my apps is that I feel like everyone needs because like me and my accountant go in with each other because I'm very, very frugal. But something I'm not frugal on and you know she thinks I could be more frugal is Clarity Money. Um, this app literally breaks down how you're spending your money, when you're spending your money and allows me to save. So. I just randomly started to put up ten dollars a month for my wedding in June, just because I want these shoes that are a little bit more than I should be paying for them. <laughs> um, so I'm like, I'm gonna put up ten dollars. So right now, I'm looking, and I already have eight hundred and ninety-one dollars saved, and I'm, this is like money I didn't even think about saving. So you can just, and it, and it doesn't. It's like in a separate account. So. I would not even notice ten dollars. Somebody could probably be scamming me right now for ten dollars because I wouldn't notice it coming out of my bank account. But Clarity Money also allows you to negotiate bills, so negotiate things that they feel like you're spending too much on. Um, so Clarity Money is one, and then two because you guys know that I signed a big contract in 2015 and was fired. I don't do nothing without a contract. Nothing. And Simone know that. <laughs> um, there's an app called Shake. It's a free app. So even if you call me and say, hey, Skittles, can you come to my birthday party and host? Okay, I'm going to send you a contract, right? So this app literally provides you with all these type of contracts that you can literally just input the information in and send it to a friend. They can sign it, and we have a contract now. Mm-hmm. Just in case I need to sue you. So, shake. Shake. I love that. Yeah. Shake. Yes, I love shake. When I saw it, I was like... Yeah, Cause I've never seen that one. I've seen them. Yes. Cause I had a, I, I mean, my lawyer. I only work with one lawyer, and he's like one, the the biggest clothing lawyer in New York. So if I ask him to do a small thing, it's a big fee. So I'm like, okay, we gotta get away from these big fees, right. especially when I'm doing a contract with her or doing a contract, you know. So um, Shake is really, really good, and I've seen that. Shake, like shake, like shake, like shake. S H A. K-E. Oh, I put it in, but I'm not saying it. It's by Legal Shield, it's so a single form. Oh, oh form is the same shield. Legal form? form it's legal What is, okay, so it's, it what do you have? Because you have it. Oh. If I have it, it's by Legal Shield. I think it's still That's what it is. It's shape. Shape is form by Legal Shield. And it's an orange little. Yeah, yeah, it's orange. Um, my last two apps because I think you guys can really use this is um, sign now sign now because I know that there's a lot of times where you guys have to sign something and it me in the past I just always forgot and people like you didn't sign this you didn't sign this um, so sign now is really good because you can literally sign a contract on your phone and send it off um, and then you should have 
whatever e platform you're using. So like if you have if you have Shopify, if you have Big Cartel, if you have Wix, you should have those apps on your phone so that you can be getting notifications every time someone spends money with you. And that could, in my mind, it helps me, it motivates me. Every time I hear cha ching on Shopify, then I'm like, oh, let me see if any of my employees gave them a discount. <laughs> or let me see if, oh, oh Alex shopped with us three times this week, let me text her. Hey, Alex, thanks so much, you know, things like that. So, hmm? We missed the one, the 17 hats. Oh, 17 hats. And she was 17 so hats. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It does a lot. Yes, so you definitely should have your um, e commerce platform. Another thing that I do is when I get on live, most of the time I spend um, time on live and I have to make sure that I'm making, that I'm selling something. Because I, me, with me having a personal brand, I don't feel that it's um beneficial for me to just be on live like chilling like hey my life is really not that interesting like for y'all just sit and watch me i think but if i'm going to teach you something then i also want to be able to get conversion to my website so while i'm on live i try to make it worthwhile because again time is money so a lot of times if you have a big following you spend time on live i push it to someone all the time if you see her doing nothing on live please yell there <laughs> um but if you should be selling something or you should be promoting something or you should be marketing something because those followers are that you have their attention so every time i'm on live I, it's only been one time that i've been on live for an hour and i and i made less than a thousand dollars Every single time I'm on live, y'all know Skittles is getting a coin, okay? <laughs> Every time. Y'all buy some too, okay? <laughs> but um, I'm, it is not like I'm just trying to make money. It's I'm selling a class. I'm, you know, um, building clientele. I'm doing coaching calls because I want to help more people. My ultimate goal is to help more entrepreneurs. And at the end of the day, they can say, because of Skittles, I'm more successful, you know? Um, so that's what you should be doing when you are online when you're spending time on social media you should be monitoring the money that is coming from the time that you're spending i if you guys go in the settings of your phone and see um how much time you spent on each app instagram is probably like 78 percent on your phone right of your battery life or on the time that you spent on the app and it's like how many people can say i've made money from instagram so that's why I spent 70% on that. And so I always try to convert it. Like, okay, if I spent 70, if I spent 60% of my time on Instagram, I try to put $10 for every hour that was spent on Instagram. So at that moment, if I spent 60% of my time, I should have made, it. you know what I'm saying? So you guys gotta think about it like that. And I guarantee you, you'll stop being nosy. You'll stop scrolling on other people's page. You'll start just getting caught up in the nonsense. Like, I used to catch myself. I follow, I unfollow Shay Room because I used to catch up hours at a time on the T because I'm not like a, I, I don't know, I can't just scroll and catch a T. I want to be like, okay, this story. <laughs> oh, and refer back five months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what she said? Okay. And I was like, I'm losing so much time and money now, and now I have a newborn, and my days already are moving fast. So I have to make sure that the 60% of the time that I'm on this platform is making me money. And you guys should do that too. I guarantee you, if you go in your settings and you say, whoa, I spent 98% and I make $98, even do it for a dollar. You know what I'm saying? I didn't make $98 on this platform. I'm doing the wrong thing. I could be working at Taco Bell. I could be working at, you know, a job and make that much money, you know? So if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you have to make your time count. No, I mean, that was some good stuff there that you were talking about because I was um, sitting here thinking, and I'm, I'm like that too, where I started to categorize my time. And I'm a stickler for a calendar for some type of something to keep me on task because you know how you get to the end of the day and you're like, I haven't did this. I didn't do that. I don't have enough hours. You have enough hours is what we're doing with the time that we have. And a lot of it, I found myself waking up out of my sleep looking on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Why am I on Instagram? It's not, you know, it's not, you know, so I had to start moving the phone away from me. Yeah. Or um, I sometimes, like every maybe 30 days, 60 days, I found myself um, deleting the app. Just so that I can stay focused to be able to get, you know, get some things done. And another thing that I wanted wanted to say, that's another question that's not on here, is um, your brand. When you're building your brand, 
is it okay? Because I, I hear a lot of people say, oh, that person did that, or that person already sells that, or they're already doing this. Um, but my take on it is there are so many different bars of soap out there. There are so many bottles of lotion yes. out there. However, what if Johnson & Johnson, um, what's the other lotion that we use? Jergens would have said, well, I'm not going to start a lotion brand because Johnson & Johnson has it. What is your take as to building your brand even um, if it's it looks like something that you've already seen before? Uh, go ahead. First. I, I'm going to say, for me, when I started, it wasn't like a t-shirt brand that spoke to me that that I could say, oh my God, I love this brand. You get what I'm saying? Like, this speaks to me. Um, so I kind of already stepped into a market. But even still, you can get t-shirts anywhere. You can walk in Goodwill and get t-shirts. You can walk in Friend Family Dollar and buy a t-shirt. So I still had to make it different, which is why I, in the first year, almost died spraying cupcake spray in my little corner size office because I wanted when you opened your package it to smell like a cupcake like freshly baked you know um and that spray is at Walmart for like 98 cents it's like an aerosol can <laughs> but we were spraying all the shirts you know and I wanted to make sure my visuals were on point like I think nowadays when you look at your brand you can't look at your brand like a small brand no more you have to say what is my brand and who is my competition? My com even Talia sells t-shirts. My competition is Italian. My competition is Polo. My competition is, you know, the next biggest brand. If I'm a cosmetic company, I can't say, oh, I'm looking at, you know, Simone's cosmetics. I'm, that's my competition. My competition is MAC. Right. My competition is Bobby Brown. Because you have to think, it's millions of people that are in love with MAC lipstick. Mm -hmm. How can you sell her out of going to MAC? If she go to your page and you and she and you don't know her, and you go to her page and she got like her little sister wearing the lipstick and holding it up, like you know, are you buying it from her? Are you leaving Mac to go to her? No, you're not. But if you got a, if you see her, uh, everybody follow like Mingly on Instagram, mm -hmm. so you see the money and the time that she puts into her visuals, right? Mm -hmm. Her videos, her photography. Yeah, she has a full of red cars, houses, everything because. She knows that her competition is not um, the corner store. Her competition is like Paul Mitchell or whoever the next biggest brand is. So you have to make your brand, you have to compete with them. So when I think about my t-shirts, like even though we didn't have no budget, like I'm like, okay, we need to go on the racetracks. We need to make it look as if we're competing with Forever 21, you know? Our website needs to look up to par. We cannot just lay the shirt on the floor with Lynn all around it and you're blurry. <laughs> camera phone, Obama phone, trying to <laughs> take the picture and post it on Instagram. Like it's, we're, we're in a new day and age now. Mm -hmm. People have the choice of where to spend their money. So, and it's not even about celebrities. It's not even about, oh, let me get it to a celebrity. Cause you can get it to a celebrity and they can go on your page and be like, no, mm -hmm. it's whack. You know, focus on your brand, the quality of your brand and the look of your brand. And I think that's what's gonna make you stand out. Um, it's funny because when I think of the toilet paper commercial, I always think of the um, I always think of the the toilet paper with the bears. The bears. Right. I always think of that, and that's why I don't buy no other toilet paper because I always be like, oh, the bears they be so comfortable, <laughs> they be, and and it be like, oh, this on sale, but uh, no, let me get the bears, bears. Right. because you have to think about their marketing, right? right? You can get donuts from anywhere, but when you think of donuts, what do you think about Krispy Kreme, right? right? You think about a dollar burger, what do you think about? McDonald's. You think about coffee, you can get coffee from it. I do get good coffee from QT, but what do you think about Starbucks? Starbucks. You know what I'm saying? I want to piggyback off that. Um, this is just an example that came into my head. Kylie Jenner is neither here nor there. But <laughs> <laughs> Kylie Jenner dropped her lip gloss line, right? She did lips. lips. Or, for sure. <laughs> her fake lips. Okay. <laughs> she dropped her lip gloss line, um, selling out millions of dollars in right. like 24 hours, right? Guess who just dropped? Make a line. Yeah. No, Kim K. Her yep. sister. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Her, her, her sister. Oh, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? And guess what? Kylie's still selling out. And guess what? Kim K is selling out. And they're sisters. Right. So you you scared to compete with your damn friends. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> These sisters are like, guess what? There's millions of people that follow Kylie that don't follow Kim. There's millions of people that follow Kim that don't follow Kylie. So it's like they're blood sisters, BFFs, 
and they got the same brand. So you worried about, hey, my homegirl sell weed. That's fine. Baby girl, I'm selling weed. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. right. We can work it together. We can do events together. We, right. you can, we can figure out a way to do it together. We can put our brands together and, you know, Mac and Fenty. Guess what? Be Simone and Skittles. Whatever. But don't be scared to do what people around you are already doing. Right. There's a McDonald's on every corner. And make, make you get what I'm saying? It's enough money for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that we brought that up because I think it's important because a lot of people stay stagnated. They have an idea, but, oh, they did it before me. They got to it first. And then they'll go back to the drawing board and try to recreate something. And you don't need to recreate anything. You just got to do it. You just have to move forward because your people are waiting for you to do it. You know, stop giving away you're calm, mm -hmm. you know, right. just sitting there saying, well, I should have done this, I should have did that, because there, let me tell you, I have so many billion dollar ideas and things that I should have done um, years ago, and I got upset when I saw it on the commercials, mm -hmm. like um, the car seats, perfect example, the baby car seats that alarmed you that the child was still in the car. Mm -hmm. When I had my last daughter, she's 13 now, but when I had her, I wanted to do that, and I called somebody. I was like, you know, how can we do this? And back then, you know, you gotta go through so much red tape and all of this different stuff. And then one day, I walk in Walmart, and what do I see? The car seats that have the alarm. My grandson has this annoying car seat in my car that every time I put on, I stop on brakes because the car shuts off. It starts ringing, letting me know that he's still in the car. I'm like, I know he's in the car. Two days ago, <laughs> now, yeah, because I, I. Yeah, you need it because you, you're like when you're so busy, it's realistic. It's yeah. realistic because when you're so busy and you're a new mom, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. So back then, I was thinking like that because anything did happen. You know, yeah. so you have to. You're always trying to find a solution. That's what entrepreneurship is about. You see a problem and you create a solution. Yes. Everybody doesn't want to wear um, Kim K. Um, brand. Mm -hmm. So then when Fenty came out, Fenty was like, whoosh, you know. We're glad that it came out because it helped our skin color. There's always been so many different, you know, makeup lines out there. You had um, Queen Latifah brand, yeah. you know, and hers does, yeah, hers does really well and it looks really good. But guess what? When Fenty came out, everybody wanted the trophy wife. Right. You know, everybody wanted to go out there. So I don't want you to put your goals and your dreams and aspirations on hold because your homegirl doing it. Yeah. You know, don't worry about it. And what we say, uh, you know, there is no competition. Yeah, yeah. And then I am. Don't my do it just because your homegirls doing it. Right? That's another. Also, thing. Be, oh, she's selling. I want to. You don't no. want to sell lip gloss. You <laughs> see her doing it and being successful. What do you want to do? Right. Yes. Yes. Don't yes. do it because she is doing it. Unless that's really your passion and your drive, it's okay to have the same passion and go down the same lane. But don't just oh now I want to sell bundles, girl. You, didn't want you to weren't. Sell bundles. No, you didn't. You really, were natural five days. Ago. Right, right, right. So that's really focus point. on what you want to do. If it happens to be the same thing, yes. fine. But don't just do it because you see someone else doing it and being successful at it. If that's not your passion. And you'll know if it's your passion because your passion wakes you up in the morning yeah, and yeah. it keeps you up at night. Yeah. So, you know, your passion goes far beyond my friend. You know, people aren't supporting me because when you know, people aren't clapping, snapping you on your back, you know, tapping you up and telling you you're doing a good job, your passion will keep you still going. Mm -hmm. When the sales aren't coming in, when you're not getting, you know, getting the orders or people are gossiping and talking bad about your brand, your passion is going to keep you pushing because you believe in it. Mm -hmm. And I was telling my sister the other day, we had an event here and I was in tears, like literally talking when I went home talking to my sister because I was like, you know, what if she would have gave up on cup, um, Cupcake Mafia? Mm -hmm. When they, when they basically fired her from her, her own brand. But her passion said, I, this is my brand, this is my baby. That's like a mom having a, a baby. This is mine and I'm gonna fight for it. So you have to know that if you're starting something, don't change in 90 days because you didn't make coins. That's, that wasn't your passion. Right. You know, don't just keep switching. Because I, if I know you cache as a, a stylist and a you know hairdresser and you're styling people and then next week you're, you're talking about I'm baking cakes, I'm going to be like, well, what you doing? You know, which one are you doing? Are you taking seriously? You know, so you have to be mindful of that. And like Simone said, staying in your lane and knowing that you're doing this because it's something you want to do, not because you're... You know your homegirl wants to do it. Mm -hmm. yep. So I think we had some questions. I saw yep. 
question. Oh, I'm sorry. I do have her question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, my question was, um, you know, is there a strategic order in which you deliver your brand when you have more than one passion or more than one brand? Um, and my reason for asking that is because I have a version here brand, and that was my baby, but now that I do speaking and I have a powerful testimony to um, give to the world, what I realized is kind of like I started to fall in love with me, my personal brand, because I realized that if I deliver me, like she was kind of saying earlier, people fall in love with who you are and they buy your product because of you. So I, my guess is there an order in which you should deliver those things. I would just say, you know, they say you're supposed to have seven streams of income. <laughs> so, whatever. She touched on it earlier when she was saying she's passionate about music, you know, but comedy is bringing in the coin. So, it's like focus on what's bringing in the coin, go hard, because everything else, like you said, you can spoon feed them to them. So, if you got Virgin here, you know, you get your platform, your personal platform to where it needs to be, you can always come out and say, hey, you know, even if you're, what do you um, do public speaking about? Um, I share my testimony. I talk about just strengthening yourself, mm -hmm. um, being able to endure trials and tribulations that may come before you, mm -hmm. and trusting your process. Mm -hmm. um, believing that the ability of your mind is stronger than any inability mm -hmm. um, that you may have, and that's what I deliver to. That's awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Keisha, so it's kind of the same thing with me. Um, I do personal speaking. I just know when it's time to do what. You get what I'm saying? So like, Everybody always asks me online, like I always say, hey, I'm the owner of Cupcake Mafia, but you will never ever see me selling the Cupcake Mafia product on my live. You'll never ever see me like, I'll wear my Cupcake Mafia outfits, but you'll never see me say, oh, you got to get this guy, da, 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 da. that's because I know the Cupcake Mafia audience is my audience, but they already love the Cupcake Mafia brand. You get what I'm saying? And I built the Cupcake Mafia brand on other people. So my models, my influencers, the celebrities that wore my brand, they were the face of Cupcake Mafia. So I think what you should be doing now is simultaneously building up your name, building up your brand, but putting your hair business in with the face of others. So send Naya some hair, some more, you know, whoever. Get them talking about your hair. You don't have to be the one always shouting to them out. Because sometimes people don't believe you. I could be like, oh, Cookie Mommy is the best boutique in, in Atlanta. They're like, yeah, of course, it's yours. You know what I'm right. saying? But if Simone screams it, if Naya screams it, if Cache screams it, if Alicia screams it, y'all believe them more, right? Because you have a personal relationship with Simone, you know Naya, you know Alicia. So you're like, oh, that's my homegirl. Okay, I want to work with her. I want to go there because of her. Or I want to wear that hair because of this person. So you don't necessarily have to be... Um, doing all of it and people always ask me oh well, why you don't post all your clients or why you don't do this because then i don't look like i'm selling everything and which is i told alicia why i don't do network marketing <laughs> yes i would kill it i would be six figure earner but to me it just doesn't work for me because i already have so many different things that i sell and i feel like network marketing is is your life like you have to do that all day every day and i don't want to be you can be, you, you can have seven figures, seven strings of income behind you. They don't have to be in front of you. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be on your page. I sell skirts. I sell shirts. I sell books. I sell everything. Myself, you know, like, <laughs> you, but it could be, you really could be doing that behind, you know, right. behind the stream, behind the scenes. You don't have to look, you know those people you follow that do everything and you like, girl, <laughs> one, make one work at least. Right. <laughs> And that's another thing is like because I made Cupcake Mafia work, now I can sell classes about how I made Cupcake Mafia work. Because I made Cupcake Mafia work, now I can coach on how I make, you know, because I mean, like, so at first, people have to see the one thing that you were successful at and then want to purchase the other thing. So I think one of my biggest things that with the hair. Um, I love the hair business. I love beautifying women. So it all comes together with everything I do is to uplift, embrace, and empower women. So for me, with the hair thing, why I wanted to shift that because I wanted to take my personal face like back from the business, like you were saying. Because for me, it's like this: if you go to Walmart and you buy something and a string is out of place, you don't go crazy. 
But when you get something from a person and you have a personal um, attachment to them, they are like attacking you. I'm like, if you get a pair of Jordans and you got a stitch out of place, you don't go crazy on Jordan. Right. Ooh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, mm -hmm. Go, go, go. But that goes back to what we talked about um, yesterday. Removing your face from the brand, right. not being always being the face of the brand. Right. You know, so who um, owns Target? A girl or a lady or a man? Who owns Walmart? A lady or a man? A husband and a wife. Right, but okay. Now, so yeah, so it's like you don't you if you seen them walking down the street, you would not, you would not know. You would not be like, I stayed in your line at Walmart <laughs> for five hours on Thanksgiving. Y'all need to, you wouldn't say that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I personally don't like personal attacks. So yeah. that's one reason I kept my brand separately. Because they were going to be like, oh, now she's doing this. She's a rapper. She's doing this. She's doing, you know. So I separated myself from Cupcake Mafia. And then once people fell in love with my brand, and I was like, it's mine. <laughs> you know, y'all love it now. It's mine. But you don't always have to be the forefront. Everybody don't have to know your story to push the product, you know. And make people fall in love with your product. That's why I am the trending topic is has its own life. Yes. <laughs> and Alicia Moore has its own, you know, its own life. Because like you said, when you build up a network marketing business <clears throat> as big as I have, you can't just come out and say this or you know or say that because you built that audience based on network marketing, what they know you as, you know? But I am a trending topic is something totally separate that people are learning to respect, even even though they never see my face. You know, even if I have a picture of me and my girls and then I'm like, I need to take that picture down. Because I don't want to ever be the face because I realize that people will not buy, they will not support based upon judging you. And if I was able to build a multi-million dollar organization, multiple millions, almost $50 million organization, um, yearly a uh, year uh, organization without ever getting in front of a room without ever talking to people then you can definitely build a brand without them having to just know see your, your pretty face we know you got freckles and we like it but you know sometimes it's not good to be in the front yeah so Skittle share her story definitely on that and I was like back there getting mad like why would they do that oh like, yeah when I, when I need to be a black owner at all like, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I had nine Caucasian girls walk, working for me. And it wasn't because I, I was like, oh, all Caucasian girls. No, that's who showed up to the interview. <laughs> like, and, and because of that, I was, it was, I was targeted and people did not want me to win. And so I was cool with not being a face. Like, at the end of the day, all money is green. So whatever color person brings it to me is fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, so... You don't have to always be the face. And sometimes it's good for you. I love Walmart. I don't ever want to be famous. Like, I love the fact that Simone is blowing up and they're like, you don't, why, you don't post your face. Why you don't take pictures of her and post you on her page? You will have a bigger following. I'm like, no. Her followers are crazy. They say crazy stuff. Like, no. I can't even take that pressure. My baby, my, me having a baby got me so many followers and they now trying to tell me how to be a parent. And I'm like, yeah. well, I'll go back. So, like, yeah. I was happy with my little few followers, so, um, you know, sometimes you're not meant to be the face, because at any point in time, it could blow up, and then you're like, oh my God, my whole life has changed, and I, I, I like my little normal life. Or, uh, really quick, if you are the face, they don't have to know it's your brand. Yeah. I have a friend that's doing that right now. She's uh, promoting body oils. It's the bomb. It. You would think an old white man owns it. She promotes it like she's being endorsed by that brand. Yeah. And it's her brand, yeah. and it's blowing up. And Jay Nice did that for a it's long. Crazy. You guys follow Jay Nice on Instagram? Yeah. She's fashionable. She did that oh, for yeah. a long time. Like she always acted as if she was the buyer of Closet Envy, mm -hmm. and it's her brand, you know. So um, a lot of people do that just to like test the waters. Right, like, right. If you just want to be the face of your brand, like nah, I'm gonna be the star, you know. Right. <laughs> people don't have to know it's yours. Shay, you had a oh, you had um the three of you. Um, when do you know that you posted too much? Like, I watched you from the other cats. I was seeing you in the side videos. I've seen all that. When do you know that you posted too much? Miss Skittles, you do like 52,000 things. We already know what I mean. So when do you know that you po you're posting way too much content? Mm. Because there's a fine line between knowing, okay, I'm giving the people what they want versus I'm posting too much and I'm oversaturating the market. 
when do you know the difference or is that just something that you test your brain based on? Your numbers will tell you. Yeah. It'll <laughs> you know, be like, right there. When you post so, that one video, yeah, I've got 500,000 views, and the next one 200,000, <laughs> next one 500,000, the next flyer, 200 likes. Okay. I like fucking with the flyers. So maybe I need to talk if I'm promoting something. Y'all don't like the flyers. Y'all like this. You can't you think yeah. the numbers will tell you. It's right there. It'll show you the analytics. It'll show you what they like and what they don't like. And on Instagram now, Skittles always gets on me about this now. You have to post a lot. Because it doesn't go in order anymore. It'll be like this person posted this 23 hours ago. Yeah. Why is it at the top of my timeline? Because they post all the time. So it's gonna put them in your timeline because they're active on this app. So you have to be active on the app for You have to think about it. Like Instagram is a business, right? Mm -hmm. So they own Instagram. They're in their office and they're trying to think about, it's just like me with Cupcake Monty. If you shop here a lot, you think I'm going to reward you, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to reward you. You shop here a lot, girl, I'm going to give you 20% off discount. But with Instagram, the people that are posting the most is keeping their app, app cool. It's keeping their app active. It's keeping their app fun. You know what I'm saying? If people just stop posting all the time, then it'd be my space. You'd be like, ah, whatever, nobody posts. I can't, everything time in my timeline is the same. So they're going to reward the people that are posting a lot every single time, no matter what time I get on Instagram. Simone is the first person in my timeline if she posts. Because once you're posting all the time, they want to keep people. Okay, I, it's hard to explain this, but if Simone posts all the time, right, and they know that you like her post, they want you to see her because that's going to make you think, oh, what's Simone doing? Let me get on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to continue to reward Simone by letting more people see her. She's on more popular pages. She's on more explore pages because she's just simply spending more time on their platform. So at the end of the day, Instagram is making more money off of ads that happen to be on Simone's feed. It just, you know, they are a business. So they're going to reward the people. They're not rewarding you if you post once a month. They don't care if you got followers. They don't care if you get, you know, whatever. I noticed that even when with Cupcake Mafia, once we post all the time and we buy an Instagram ad, it does better um, than an ad if we're not posting all the time, you know? So even now with my personal brand, I post three times a day. I tell everybody, think about it. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You eat breakfast, post. You eat lunch, post. You eat dinner, post. And that will make you stay consistent on Instagram. And I do that even if it's like a picture of my baby. I'm like, oh, let me just post. Let me post something. Let me post a quote. Let me post something. And then um, Instagram will continue to, you know, reward your efforts. Mm -hmm. Tell did you, did you, oh. Oh, what? I'll, did you want to answer that? No. Like, how, the, how does the shade room, like, how many times do you guys post? I mean, that's why the shade room is always on y'all timeline. They always speak the timeline. Which is great for their brand. Yeah. yeah, like we have to, um, you know, keep posting because we have such a large audience. And um, I guess going back to the ads you were just talking about, I, you know, I post my ads on Shade Room for my t-shirts. So I'll go and I'll look at our analytics and, you know, I'll look at other people's ads and I'll study, you know, like for instance, you said flyers don't really do well mm -hmm. or, um, you know, videos, you just, the more engaging your post is, the more people are going to be attracted to it. It's just with the algorithms. You got to, and it, the algorithm things, it comes in waves. You got to just, I guess, hop on it when, when you notice it. Um, How many times does Shade Room post per day? Typically? We probably post about 70, 80 things. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a fall on the ground. <laughs> my fingers are... Because I know during my shift, like, mm. I'll mm -hmm. probably post, like, on a slow day, 20, 30 things. Mm -hmm. But that's just my shift. We have, like, mm -hmm. five, four or five shifts in mm -hmm. a day. That's mm -hmm. why I always see everything you post. But look at there. Look at, look at, look at where Shade Room came from. Like, this very small... Like, when I started following them, even just two years ago, yeah. You were not even close to where you guys are now. And it's because, think about it, they, they are getting national recognition with TV shows. Like, people are quoting them as the blog, you know, like the media blog. Um, so, and it's because they are constantly giving it to you. Even, I used to, when I first started, I was following like Baller Alert in the shade room. Like, and then it's like, now nah, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. What's up, <laughs> <laughs> no, but oh, go ahead. 
Well, I was just gonna say, and like Skittle said, she tried to post three times a day. She got on me about that. So I started posting more, and my page is doing phenomenal. Like my numbers are growing <laughs> rapidly because I post two or three times a day. But guess what? I have to get up. This no, this sounds crazy. Get up. Skittles literally texts me, "Hey, you up?" I'm like, "Yeah." I'll go to her house because she has beautiful scenery. I'll do my makeup, do my hair, bring a change of clothes. And change my outfit so I have content to post. It's a job. Yeah, you have got to yeah. post. That's, that's exactly what I was. You say. got to make it a job to post. I ha- I literally will do an outfit change. Like I'm having a damn photo shoot on the iPhone. <laughs> throw my hair in a ponytail and make my followers think it's a new day. But I'll post it in three days. So I have content for the week. You have got to post on those social media platforms. Right, and then something you guys could do this too. But something I do with my clients as far as social media, I make them calendars. So like she said, you know how I'll tell them we'll do four looks in a day, and you know I'll say put this on, put this on, put this on. We're gonna take these cute pictures. I'll give you a calendar. This is what you're posting. This is the time you're posting it. This is the caption, and like the calendar will be for three weeks. So it's really legit, like a job, and they're called social media calendars. You can Google like templates that you can use, but you go in there, you post the days, you post the times, and put it in Hootsuite, like I told yeah. y'all earlier, and boom, there you go for Facebook. Of course, Instagram, we have to do it manually just because. But yeah, that's what at least like four of my clients I have them doing it. So it's not like they just wake up and be flawless. No, like, no we. <laughs> did this probably like last week but you're just you know we have content that lasts for over three weeks and that's the easiest way just be strategic with everything and have it kind of laid out and mapped out how do you not run out of content though you said how do you not run out of content oh no like, i think you never run out of content it's always like, or at least an expression not, not something that you haven't done before what do, what do you do i do pr and okay. i'm working on a couple of cheerleading events and things like that mm-hmm. so, you post yourself on your page or just your brand i, I have my own personal page and then i have another page that Got you. Okay. So I I never run out of content on my personal page because it's me. Right. And I and I also with my brand know we always recreate. And I tell um, if you have a clothing brand, I do not care if you <laughs> order twenty cent t shirts and they crinkly, crickly, hard and make you itch. But if you take really good pictures and make your visuals stand out, people will buy it. You know, I don't care. Like what I do in my store with my boutique and my photographer right there, he would tell you, Lowe's, how many times have we shot the, uh, the only accept, uh, I only accept apologies in cash. How many times we shot that shirt? Uh, about 10 times. Yes, like every time, every single time. Simone comes in, she's like, we shooting this again? Yes, you look different. We yeah, shooting it again. Yeah. Like, because if it didn't, if, if it didn't sell on this model, it's gonna sell on this model. Oh, it didn't sell on this model. Oh, it's gonna sell on her. If it didn't sell on her, I'm gonna put it on, you know? And then I'll mark it down. So it's, you, sometimes people look at their product and like, I laid it on the floor and I took a picture and people didn't go crazy for it. Or, oh, I got hired a model and I did this photo shoot, but the pictures are blurry. You know, you have to worry about your visuals. How does it look to someone else that's not you? And a lot of times I get on them a lot because like we did a shoot last week and I'm like, man, this shoot was bomb. Y'all did this amazing set. The set was everything bomb. Models was everything. You can't read none of the words on the shirt. The model like this, the model like that. I'm like, ah, oh, shoot it again next Tuesday. You get what I'm saying? So you have to continue to build. When I was in the hospital, I was in construction for three days. So I would say, I was in there like, whoo, whoo. Got a contour, got a contour, baby. Yeah. Go come, they're gonna take pictures. Come on. <laughs> like, literally, because I knew that one, I didn't wanna look ugly um, having this baby, and I wanted the experience. And then on top of that, you know, my family and friends was coming later. And so I was like, no, at the end of the day, this needs to be a moment for me. And I, and do I really want that moment to be lost? I'm, I don't know if I'm having another baby, but <laughs> that one was enough, and that moment was <laughs> good enough. And I had a C-section, so people, um, you know, a couple of days later, I'm like, oh my God, I'm looking on Instagram. My analytics were down because I was posting things and I had already not been posting for three days, you know, not being in the hospital. So trust and believe, I had my pajama pants on because I couldn't, like, really move my legs that much. I had a cute shirt on, me and the baby was taking pictures like, hey guys, you know, this class, or check out my website, or book a coaching call, because I can do the coaching calls in my bed with my baby, you know? So sometimes it takes that extra step. Y'all didn't know I had a pajamas, y'all didn't know I just had a C-section that was literally like, can't get up off the bed, you know? So you have to go the extra mile with your content, and that's when you'll start seeing that money, you know, flowing. Uh, we can ask 
Talia, a few more questions, and then we're going to open it up. Okay, Talia, how did you become the editor for The Shape? Well, um, I started as an intern. Um, it's almost 2018, so I started in March 2015. The blog by then was like four or five months old, and um, you know, I was just approached like this girl needs help building her blog. She's looking for interns. It's not a paid position, but you know, you know, my friend who uh, offered offered me the position was like, you know, I know you you've always taken creative classes. Da 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 da. I actually studied biology and economics in school. I didn't even <laughs> study any of this. But I was always in advanced writing classes and creative writing classes. So he remembered that and was like, hey, you know, it's not paid, but it's something to do. I was like, okay. So literally a month later, some weeks later, we like just started growing exponentially. Um, hit a million, then five million, mm. and that became 10 million, now we're at 11.1 .1 on Instagram. Wow. But um, I didn't even know that. Uh -huh. I, I thought y'all were still at like five million. Right. <laughs> we're at 11.1. But I interned for a year um, and you know helped build the brand and tried some new things. I was kind of the first person to on our team to you know try new things. Micro blogging, um, you know, you just repost stories, repost current events, gossip, entertainment, but you know, that became mundane after a while. Everybody's doing it, what's gonna make us different? So I started to propose little creative articles to do um, to my boss. Um, I do a segment called Where They At? So I'll go find these old celeb, like I found the lady that did Cedar's World on BET. Oh, wow. And did an article on her. Um, and, like it's just random people like that. I do like these little Zodiac posts. I'll make memes, and now we all do stuff like that, but it was just like, what's going to take the brand to another level? So I did that while I was interning. Then I became an editor <laughs> this year, um, at the top of this year, so that's how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to start ground level, you know? Like, a lot of people wouldn't have took that, like, oh, a non-paid position at a little blog. But now look at where that blog is and look at where she is now, you know, and and now you have your brand and you can fuse it with the shade room as well. Yeah, like you you just have to see the visual and stuff like that. I get so like lucky sad when people um, you know, shy away from taking internships or doing some work for free because Regardless of if you see it or not, there's a vision with whoever started whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just just go with it. It's always gonna it's just I've seen so much with Shade Room and it's just it's crazy. I don't even know how to properly articulate it, but it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. So you have to see the vision and just stick with it. Mm -hmm. And now I have my own platform. Um, which is why I branched off into, because I was like, okay, there's all these people looking at my articles every day. People were starting to recognize me at different events I would go to. And I was like, okay, these people are recognizing me. Let me do something with this platform. I didn't even know what that was. I didn't know what branding was. So I just started to learn. Um, I started my t-shirt business almost two years ago. And, you know, just went on she is oh, so humbly shy. <laughs> she did five figures with her t-shirt business yeah. this wow. year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna be an advocate for all of these little shy people. It was so hard because <laughs> my first year in business, I sold maybe like 12 shirts and that was to my family members. <laughs> but this year, you know, I was applying everything I learned about branding and you know, I started spending money, I started to get ads. I started studying the ads that we were, or that other businesses were posting. And I was like, okay, well, let me get this girl. Um, Y'all know Marissa? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got her to take some pictures in my shirt. It says, don't let your new president be the reason you catch these hands. Yeah. <laughs> and, cause I was like, I had just given birth to my son. My son was born on election day. Oh. And I was looking at the TV, I was like, man, Everybody hates Donald Trump. I gotta think of something to do. So a week later, I just I just typed it out and made a made a, a mock up, and I just I printed them, 
I didn't really sell that many at first, but then I had Marissa take some pictures. She's cute. She took the cutest little picture, and I just, I started selling a whole bunch of them. So I'm like, okay. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and then five figures selling them. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> See, and, and, it's so, and it's so funny because all of the ladies here are very humble, you know, and we don't talk about successes. You know, you're not all on the rooftop, which I, that's just the way I am. Like, you know, you just don't want to be the person, that person. But sometimes you need to know what people are doing because these are our peers. These are people that we're working with every single day. These are the, the um, people that are making it happen every day. Like you'll look at Talia and be like, oh, she's so quiet, she's so humble. But then when you look at Shane Room, you're like, who, who behind this? Like, yes. who behind this? Yes. 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 And then for her to say, see, I am ratchet, it's like, no. Okay. <laughs> and then not your mother's closet. Mm -hmm. Like who thinks of this stuff? Like, but look and you look at her now, she's so humble. You know, so and um and a and a lot of people don't wanna say like kinda like boast about their success, but my mentor was Damon John. Um and he kinda told me that if, you, if people don't know the number behind what you did or if people don't if you don't talk about your success, people won't take the brand serious, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't until like Cupcake Mafia did 2.4 million to where I was able to now sell out classes, you know what I'm saying? Like get booked to speak at schools. But if I just said, oh, I have a t-shirt line, you know, I started with $300, they probably still think I'm at $300, you know? So then it's like, would you guys want to learn from me? Right. You want to learn from somebody that's like, I started with 300 and guess what? I'm still at 300. You know, like, <laughs> All right, let's time, time to go. You know, so it's it's good to um, once you get these accolades and you can say, oh, even if it's a follower, like, oh, I started with ten followers and now a week later I have a hundred. One of your friends is gonna be like, girl, how you did it? But if you just say, girl, I got a hundred followers, you know. But it every day you have to think of your accomplishments. Like, what are you accomplishing today that is more than what you accomplished yesterday? And like, even though we are like still so humble. Um, there's things that we accomplished that we now can teach you because we've accomplished those things. Right. Yes. Every accomplishment deserves to be celebrated because if you look like from where you came from to where you are now, it's just like you don't realize how much growth has you know transpired in that short or long amount of time. So it's like you know just. It's okay to give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> and Facebook will remind you how far you came. Yeah. Okay. Yes. If you need a daily reminder. <laughs> a reminder. I hate that. It's like, you posted this to you. I'm like, I'm right. like a I just, I'm like, I'm like, my eyebrows were like, yes. well, no, like I used to wear the colored eyeshadow, like yellow, pink, blue, like looking like a pack of skills. <laughs> I saw one the other day too where I had on purple, uh, purple, Eyeshadow, and I was like, or don't um, don't forget the white eyeliner, the silver, the silver cross here, the silver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my sister from here, she was like, if you don't stop, <laughs> look at this silver. I was like, it's cute. What is this style? Yeah, content will always change. <laughs> <laughs> what are three tips that you can say about ads that are successfully posted to the shade room? That you see the shade room. Okay, yeah. So I had touched on this briefly earlier. Um, I will tell you right now. Flyers generally do not, unless you got somebody popping on there, but I wouldn't recommend you post flyers. Um, they're not engaging. You want to make sure that your ads are at least, if they're um, like, you know, engaging like a video or if they just are visually appealing, bright colors, have attractive people in them. <laughs> um, that always helps. Um, and yeah, uh, what's another? Just like celebrities or socialites? I was about to say social media influencers are always good to attach with your brand. Something that Skittles has been really getting on me lately about. But no, that really does help. Um, what about a particular just, time? If I tell y'all this, it's gonna affect me. I'm giving y'all the key right now, okay? Okay. We have the key. We won't tell. Okay, so um, ads sometimes they do well at night. I know on the shade room, they do well in the evening. I like. See, I'm giving y'all the key. <laughs> you gotta get it. <laughs> get some keys. I'll, I'll just. I'll just go ahead and tell y'all. So I like to put mine up at night, like as late as possible, because. 
they'll sit there overnight. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's doing that late night scrolling, tipping in from tipping out, <laughs> looking on their phone, if your post, if, if you click on a social media page and your post is one of the first nine, because when you open up a page, you yes. first you see nine squares. So if your ad is in one of those nine squares, people are going to see it and engage with it and probably buy something. So I like to leave my late. You get the engagement at night, wake up in the morning, and before we start posting and when we start posting, then more people will see it and we get sales all day. <laughs> that It makes sense though, because I just bought something from my baby. I'm like 90 year old grandma. Mm -hmm. um, but at night she's up, like she's up at 3 a.m. And what's on TV at 3 a.m.? People selling stuff. Mm -hmm. I just bought something that doesn't work. And I'm on, <laughs> it's like $69 or something from this old lady telling me this will work for the baby oh and um, so it works people are I don't know is it like sleep apnea that you end up buying am I the only one that buys no, I, I think it's oh, okay. so our, I'm like I'm that's our time that we have that we settle down and we can think about it because I always give the analogy of the my pillow anybody say yes. my pillow seem like that my pillow commercial comes on at 2 a.m. every night and you when I'm tossing and when I'm turning, and when I'm trying to get in position, and so here comes this man on the TV oh, talking about yeah, it's true. while I'm subconsciously like out. So when I get up in the morning, I'm like, I need this my pillow. Yeah. <laughs> and if I won't get one free, so yeah. I need to hurry yeah. up and get the my right. pillow. So you know, that, I think that that works. You know, that's the time because all through the day we're running. Everybody's moving. You know, yeah. we're not really looking. We're looking, but we're really strolling. Mm -hmm. We want to pull out our credit card and purchase, but we really don't have the time to do it. So. And it's, it's so funny because I've even um, the the when I called to buy the thing, it was like fifty nine dollars, but they were like, but you can pay a payment plan of seven dollars. <laughs> And I was thinking about it like seven dollars. That might be, but it's like a fifty dollar product. Fifty dollars. Yeah. So it's like ten o'clock is what you're saying. Later. Later. Like two a.m. Midnight. We stop. Okay. I'm the only person here in Atlanta. We do have a staffer in Pittsburgh and then New York, but the rest of our staff is in L.A. So when say I work the last shift of the night, I'll stop posting at one in the morning. But sometimes they'll be, you know, up past one, well, it'll be 10 o'clock their time. So if they're up until midnight, one in the morning their time, that's three, four o'clock over here. And they'll, sometimes they'll still be posting stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the page will still be, and still be moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interject a lot, so if I think it's something, I'll just say it. Okay. <laughs> Because you already answered the next question, which was what was your best form of marketing, your t-shirt brand? Oh, definitely the, um, the ads. I mean, I don't want to say it's easy because, you know, we have such a large platform. It's 11 million people you're shooting with. Too. But just because there's 11 million people doesn't mean they're all going to buy. Like, I haven't sold a million shirts yet. But, yet. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, you do have to do some homework with your marketing, making your visuals appealing, making them engaging, linking up with social media influencers, you know, like be or a celebrity. There's a bunch of people, um, you know, it's not just shade room, there are other celebrities or people who you can pay to get your, um, to have them wear your shirts, or you can use some leverage. Like, I have people, you know, wear stuff, or do other things, and I've used some leverage that I have either with, you know, posting a, a morning inspiration video or just something. It's, you can always use leverage. There's ways to make stuff work. So you just have to figure out what the best way is for you and your brand. Make sure it makes sense too. You don't want to be like doing random stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, if it, don't, it doesn't connect, it, it doesn't flow. Like, you know, with B, when we see B, it's going to be something comical. Mm -hmm. Desi's going to be there sometime. You know, <laughs> it's going to be something. But we get the picture at the end of the day what she's selling or what she's doing. You know, mm -hmm. so it, it all flows together. Like the other day, she made the post about the. Um, the don't embarrass the, me. Don't do it. The baby don't mama. embarrass me. Oh, <laughs> oh, the baby mama. What did I say about the, oh, the, the friends? Sister. 
the friend baby mama, you and the baby mama went out to lunch. It was so oh, funny. Yeah. It was so cute. Yeah. It was I went so out to lunch with his baby mama. Yeah. Without him knowing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, girl. girl. So the pink lips so, but he looks so cute. I saw that video everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again. You don't gotta post it. Oh, 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 but what you can do is you can, then you got 30 hashtags you want to put in your post. Copy them from the caption and add them as a comment because people will feel free And then it makes your, um, it makes your post look more clean. Mm -hmm. But if you pepper a couple in there, like, I, I don't like to use more than like three in a typical post. If I'm going over that, then I'll delete one or something and you know now you can follow hashtags mm -hmm. so you can keep up with what That's other people crazy. are hashtag hashtagging in there you can tweak whatever you're going to put in your post like i just i love instagram mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but i need to figure out how to use you know facebook yes we gotta I, make, I make most of my money on instagram yeah. but i kind of have a shortcut you can take over facebook I'm going to figure it out. That's on my to-do list for next year. Facebook has like a cash app uh, where you can send cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. PayPal, I do. I have my PayPal hooked up to my Facebook somehow. I don't know how I did it, but mm -hmm. that helps me keep track of my spending. And that's another way for... Um, oh, no, no. Oh, it's just another way for me to keep track of my spending and um, keep track of my receipts. Tax season. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody can forget about them. Mm -hmm. Well, we did have questions, um, but we'll take some questions. I mean, we have another question, but we'll take some questions from the audience. I see a lot of people writing down some things. Do you still have um, questions? Go ahead. My question is uh, for everybody in the room. Are y'all anybody familiar with the net neutrality? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how that's going to affect small entrepreneurs like us and what we can do to stop. Yeah. 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 People, oh, what the I hear it. I'm sorry. What people do that? Pretty much how they're trying to like control what you can get on the internet. Yeah. 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 yeah, so you know, um, people, people came for us so much last week. Um, you know, the, the FCC voted, voted to repeal the uh, net neutrality rules, which basically keeps the internet open and free. Um, if the rules that President Obama put in place prevent um, ISPs or internet service providers like Comcast, Verizon, and at and they keep them from being able to charge customers for like a lesser quality of um, you know, internet service. They can slow your service down, make you pay if you want it to be in like a fast lane, meaning, you know, well, basically that's what it means. Um, and then they can also create packages. You know how there's like internet packages? I mean, not internet packages, but like TV. Yeah, stuff like that. They can just charge you, if you want to use Facebook and Twitter, they can charge you $5 a month. Mm -hmm. What? For yeah. Google. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Google search. Yeah. It's, it's like, if you want to search something on Google, every search is a dollar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. they kind of when did this happen? I don't think it has. Yeah. 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 It has. No, it has. It has. It has. It has. Well, thankfully, things like that, they have to go through so many like processes in order yeah, to get it yeah. um, solidified, but I they passed it. it, and only five people were in charge of that, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It was a I don't understand. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so like, if you want Instagram, you have to pay five ninety nine a month. Uh -huh. Or, you know, if you want Facebook, you pay seven ninety nine a month. Like, it's a Netflix as well. Like, an app. Like, or like iTunes, if you have Apple Music, like, you know, stuff like that. So it's definitely going to affect. Well, I guess I'll go back to hand-to-hand -hand flyers. No. Maybe this will make people read more, but that's not good. What in the world? Well, that is so people are, they're going to just not do it. People don't it's want more bills. They're right. Because like, you know. for all those apps, it's like, dang, now that's extra $50 a month. Yeah. <laughs> but but these apps, they don't care because 
You know how there's three branches of the government, like the judicial, whatever the other thing I can't think of. Corporations are like low-key the fourth branch, and they're they have just as much money as the government, and they're not like they don't they don't care. They don't really care about it. They don't, and you know they're putting their profits over consumers and their integrity. You know. You just don't care. And it's like, if you're going to pay for something, you're going to pay for it. You know how, like, like Beyonce, she has the Beehive fans. You know the Beehive, they're going to buy whatever she puts out. Mm -hmm. But if you're not a Beehive fan, you're not going to buy anything. It's kind of like that. They're targeting people who they know rely on the internet and will pay for it. Yeah. If you can't afford it, then whatever. You, you know, you can't yeah. sit with us. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So you can't sit with us. Um, Shane, your mom had a question. Um, uh, well, she left, but I had wanted to answer her question. The young lady was in here about um, posting. Um, I was going to tell her that I started my Instagram about 18 months ago with zero followers. Now I have over 250,000 followers. Oh, wow. And I post six <laughs> times a day. Six times a day. I post six, and I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking about adding two more times a day, and I don't ever feel like I run out of content, you know, and mm -hmm. it just got to the point where people who were doing um, similar pages to mine started following me, even though I was, at that time, maybe had ten or 15,000 followers, they were watching my growth and then started doing everything that I was doing, and these people had like over 250,000 followers, mm -hmm. but they saw what was happening to me, mm -hmm. and now they started posting five, six times a day. Oh. <laughs> because they probably they, posted your pictures. They were, they were. They would literally come to my page, still would see what I was posting, and then repost that, literally. I had several pages that were doing that. She gets a thousand followers a day. Shut up. And, I, <laughs> and that, and no, honestly, Simone just changed the way that she started posting, and, and one day went 7,000 followers. Yeah, it was insane. What? One day, seven. Yeah. And, and Simone, you should talk about how you, yeah. like, what made you start the change of, yeah. you know, because of course you start seeing more money, you start seeing, but again, it takes, Simone is very, very particular about the content that's posted on her page. I literally try not to book her for things and ask for too much, because if they like, oh, I need the flyers posted for five weeks, I need this, I need that, I already know Simone is not gonna do it. So I don't even try, like, they will have to have a really big check because of Simone's page. I could take 500 pictures of Simone and she'd be like, do you see this freckle right, this wrinkle? <laughs> no. Like, I'm just like, oh, this cute. Okay, cool. And then it's not even mostly like, <laughs> I think I look crazy. It'll be like the lighting yeah. or the sun's not out today. Okay, if I'm going to take a picture outside, it has to have a flash. Right. Or, and it's not just like being anal. It's that's. People want to see that gloomy yes. picture. Yes. If it's gloomy, if the picture looks gloomy, it's going to have gloomy likes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Less people are going to see it. If it's bright and fun and, oh, yeah. it looks great. It, she looks like it's a beautiful, happy day. It's going to go viral. So you have to see what the people like. People like clean, bright, fun, not a lot of stuff in the background. People just be taking pictures and posting and wondering why it's not getting likes because it's not intriguing to the naked eye. You have to really just give people what they want. And like she said, once I started, I, I've always kind of done that, but once I really got on it, is that a baby? Yeah. Is that a baby? No, no. Oh, no. Oh, it's okay. Um, yeah, just being consistent with that. And, and you have to find people around you that are going to take those pictures. If they don't understand that it's your job, sorry. You done took a hundred. We have to take a hundred more. Yeah. We didn't get the photo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's it's not even. Sometimes it's not even about my face or my hair. It's it's dark. They can't see my face. It's it's the lighting's not right. You have to come closer or whatever I'm anal about. It's working. So you have to be anal about it. If you, if there's a friend that took hit two two. You took two photos. I know I don't like either one. You had to take <laughs> ten more, and I'll let you know which one I like. Yeah. You know, it's your job. And you have to find people around you that are going to do that for you. And that is a part of positioning your circle um, to be a part either of what you're doing. Because I don't, I know that when I'm with my dude, like I already know. I could be fly. He only taking five pictures, okay? <laughs> so if I'm getting cute and I'm getting fly, it's the picture will be taken at Cupcake Mafia because I pay these girls and they're going to take my picture, okay? Yeah. Um, or I'm going to call Simone, mm -hmm. call, but I already know he's not going to take it. Like, mm -hmm. 
he gonna get his arm gonna start hurting, he's gonna pop it up, he's gonna be crooked, you know. So you have to know what your circle is good for. He will drive me all around town all day and help me handle business while I'm on my coaching calls. So okay, good. You you I can put you in that pocket, you know? Right. And you gonna have those friends, those moms, those cousins, and you need to know like She's not my picture taking friend, so I can't spend my whole day with her. I need to take some pictures for content, um, or she's not the friend that she gonna be the friend and be like, girl, can you hurry up? I'm trying to go eat. You know, can you get off this coaching call? I'm trying to eat. That's not the friend you I can have around me from 11 to 5 when my coaching calls happen. You know, so you need to build your circle around people that are gonna help you grow as well. I know if I take, I know when Simone comes to take pictures, she gonna take pictures of me too. Mm -hmm. You know things of that nature. So you need people around you, and some of the people may be in this very room. Yeah. You are creating a blog. Yeah. She's a fashion stylist. Girl, bring me some clothes because I can't afford the blog yeah. life yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I might link up with Cache, who has all the clothing connections, and we build together. Yeah. You know. Um. So that is so essential because I see so many people failing just because they like. Oh, my man don't like me to be on Instagram, or my man don't, or this, you know, or whatever. I just, I just, throw the whole man away. Wait, wait. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I can't even be. My man don't got an Instagram. And he was like, I'm thinking about getting an Instagram. I'm like, hold on, not necessary. Not necessary. Exactly. So I, I couldn't be mad at him, but at the same time, like, you need to know when to be with that person. Because it could take you away. And when I'm with my dude, I do feel like, okay, I need to have backed up content. Mm -hmm. Because no matter if I'm cute or not, he's the picture just might not make it that day. So <laughs> one, more, one more little thing. Don't let, make let people who aren't entrepreneurs make you feel bad on, about yeah. being obsessed mm -hmm. with social media. Mm -hmm. There yeah. is a limit, but it, people used to make me feel bad. Like, damn, you're so worried about... And I used to be like, damn, I am so worried about social media. I am always on. It's your job. Yeah. Now that I don't do hair, I'm all, I'm on Instagram. I'm going to other people's pages, liking their pictures. I'm commenting on Rihanna's page, hoping she go to my page. I'm under Beyonce's picture so people can see my comments. It's all strategic. I'm not on Instagram frolicking around. I'm on Instagram trying to get more traction to my page. So don't let people make you feel bad for being obsessed with your business. And because it used to it used to make me be like, well, damn, I'm going out to eat with them today. I know I can't get no pictures today. No, we don't have to take pictures today. I have to. My makeup's done. I don't like to wear makeup every day. So the day I have on makeup, I have to take pictures. You know, let people know it's your job. They have to understand that. Have you ever got hit? Yes, it got deleted. I never got it back. I started all the way from zero followers. I started all over. Yeah. I wanted to piggyback off something you said real quick, and then you have a question. But real quick to tell y'all about um, our CEO, Angie. She started the shade room because she actually got fired from a job. She wanted to submit some, um, I think it was a poem, into this, this really big thing. And her boss called her, like she played hooky from work to go do this thing. She wanted Grant. And as soon as she walked out the stage, her boss was like, either you come back to work or you're fired. And she's like, well, let me go and chase after my dreams. So that's when she started Shade Room. She didn't have a job. Mm -hmm. And she was on the internet, like trying to figure out how I'm gonna make money. And she was just reposting stories, writing stories about celebrities all day. And then it blossomed into what it is now. And her family used to make fun of her yep. for being on Instagram all the all time. Yep. But yep. now, yep. You know. But look at it, and then catch it. But look at it, what, what Simone said and what Talia said. Um, a lot of times we connect with people that aren't going in the same direction as us. Mm -hmm. And they'll never understand. So what we're trying to get them to understand, they don't understand, you know? And then those are the same ones that want to spend your money. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't want to spend your money not when they're talking eating, about yeah. you, you know, on social media all day. You know, so don't let anybody make you feel guilty. And, and it may not be where you want it right now. Mm -hmm. We may be in the process of building it. But guess what? They, their vision is not your vision, mm -hmm. you know. And sometimes we'll dim down to kind of appease to others yeah. because we don't want to seem obsessive. We don't want people to feel like 
All we do is look on social media. Like, I work from home. I work in my bed. I don't have to get up every day, do my makeup. I don't have to do that. But people will call me, and I feel like it's a disrespect because they're like, well, I need you to do this, and I need you to do that. Well, ma'am, I work from home. Well, you can just get up and do No, I cannot. I work from home. I have to do, there's certain hours that I dedicate to my business to make sure that I get a check on Tuesday, right. you know, so I have to work those hours. And when you find that people are constantly disrespecting that, maybe right now is not the season because you're in the process of building something and you have to stay focused because as soon as, you, you know, your homegirl want to keep going out to eat, I'm the one gaining the weight and I'm not working. So <laughs> something is, you know, it's a problem. So we have to kind of modify it and not say and break up your relationships or friendships, but just now is not the season or the time. I have a friend like that right now, sitting home, clicking like on my pictures. But you should have been here, you know. You yeah. should have been here, but you gave me every excuse of why you sh why you could couldn't come. But then you'll call me about a game, or you'll call me about a a, a party, or you'll call me about something that is irrelevant because it's not bringing in coins. And at the end of the day, they're t they're taking coins, but I'm and you're spending coins, but you're not getting coins. You understand? So we have to be mindful of that and be okay with telling your friend. I just can't do it. You know, like Simone said, your friends should know she needs to take 50 pictures. you got to get the right <laughs> angle. It's just what it is. It is what it is. My husband gets mad. This is him with the phone. And it ain't me being mad. My followers are mad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a damn. I be walking around in sweatpants, hair tied, chilling with no makeup on. But they don't want to see they that. They don't want to see all that. The time, all the time. You know, I try to keep a balance. But, you know, you got to give the people whatever what works is what you have to give them. You know? And I want to kind of talk back about what Talia just said about Angie, like, quitting, I mean, getting fired from her job, just with entrepreneurship in general. Like, how many of y'all consider yourselves entrepreneurs? See, basically the whole world. So don't make people feel you, make you feel bad about being an entrepreneur either. You know what I mean? Like, when you get the opportunity, of course, work nine to five to support yourself, but when you get the opportunity, you know, to... Put 24-7 into your passion and into your craft. Make sure that you do that or whatever. Because when I graduated college, I had a corporate job and I was making money. But I'm like, why am I sitting here, you know, working for these white people? That's what it was. I'm like, why am I sitting here, you know, working for them when I can be out, you know, starting my own business? So now I'm at the point where I make like 15 to 20K a month or whatever just by doing my own business and, you know, having retainers on my clients. So it's like you can live a, you know what I mean, like a decent life and still build your own brand and have entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. take that path. You don't have to make people make you feel bad like, oh, why don't you get a job or, oh, why are you always working on that and then it's not bringing in money? Because it will. Like, yeah. you're putting 24-7 into your job and into your career, you'll get to where you want to be right. very quickly, too. So, 24-7 into your job. <laughs> you put 24-7 into your man and they give you <laughs> 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 yeah. So, just, just your so I did have a question um, about far as pictures. Like, I'm the friend that don't like taking pictures. So, I, no, oh, y'all have questions? People? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I'm the friend that don't like taking pictures. So I think i got to get more into taking pictures and being a visual because, I mean, what do you do when you not wanting to take pictures and you got to post on social media or if you're like me i'm a stylist so sometimes people want to see my style but i don't like like i'm the friend like okay two pictures that's good that's good. wait <laughs> you, you don't like to take them for people no, or of like yourself of myself because you, you don't feel like you're photogenic or you just don't no, like to? i know i'm photogenic you just don't <laughs> like <it. laughs> what coaching call and want to you know and now I have to make my baby a part of the my lifestyle because I would just post her all day 
But I know everybody just don't want to see my baby, you know. So I have to post funny things like when she's sticking her tongue out, I'll be like, oh, my mama said, did you buy a coaching call? You know, like I have to make it a part of my brand. I can't just be like, look at my cute kid. Oh, my cute kid. You know, they'd be like, okay, girl, you sell, you know. So you have to make it all blend together. But clean up your page. You know how... You have that one friend and all she do is post memes and you like, girl, you trying to sell this hair company, but every your whole page is memes, your whole page is your dude or Thanksgiving food or food you cook. Like make it a part of your brand. Simone promotes her vegan food because she gets vegan endorsements from it. You know what I'm saying? Not just because she's just out there like, oh I wanna you have to make it, you have to know what to post. What you're not posting it for you. You're posting it for the audience. So what do they want to see? If, if they're not following you to find out what food you're eating, then you typically should not post it. Or you, that's the, what the story is for. So it can be gone. But on your actual page, it should be nothing but high quality photos. Whether you're using uh, Camera Plus mm -hmm. or um, whatever them apps are. Facetune. Oh wait, Camera 360. Camera 360. Whether you're using Facetune or whatever make sure that you are editing your photos posting the best photos possible there's some times where i'm like oh i'm not feeling today i just lighten it up a little bit you know what i'm saying they got makeup apps mm -hmm. i don't even have to do my thing yeah you can you can add the lashes you didn't have you didn't want to go to cvs so you add lashes mm -hmm. you know things of that nature but like everything is based on your audience now so you're wondering why, oh, why is my conversion so low? Or why are, why do I have a 2,000 followers but I don't have a lot of people buying? It's because you're not putting the effort into your brand. You need to be hiring the best models or working with your cute friends. All of our friends are not that all cute. I got a couple of friends that, you know, they not gonna model for me. I love them, we can go out, we can hang together, but I'm not gonna have you in my advertisement. Don't just find, oh, the person next to you, oh, can you take this picture for me real quick? No, is that what your audience wants to see? You know, there's models that sometimes I have to be like, I do not want to pay her, or I don't even want to work for her, but I know that that's what my audience wants. Or, oh, I really want to put this on a shirt. I really want to, this is my expression I think would be great for my audience, but my, or it's great for me, but my audience won't want it. So you got to think about your audience. Look at those analytics on your Instagram and see, okay, my audience is all girls. Um, even with my one of my clients, she has a teacher's brand, and 2% of her followers are male teachers, and she's releasing five t-shirts next month for males, and I'm like, whoa, wait, why? <laughs> we have all 98% followers. She's like, yeah, I wanna get more into the guy teachers, but you don't have them yet. So you're gonna have a whole bunch of inventory that's sitting there, until you build, build with an ambassador or an influencer that is a guy teacher that has more, that knows more guy teachers, and then create a collaboration with him, and that will launch your guy, you know, teacher business instead of just putting your money out there and it not working. So, um, content is so so important, and how it looks to your eye. I know that you look, scroll down your feed and see, is it junky? Is it cluttered? Is it something that doesn't really represent me well? Was I feeling some way one day and I posted, oh, and then I'm like trying to represent a holy teacher. You know, like, cause we're, we're human people. So sometimes we get into the mood where we want to express ourselves. But then that day after you like, well, maybe that just doesn't look good on our page. So, um, you know, that, that that's all important, right? You guys. Okay, so we're getting ready to wind it up, but Skittles. Skittles. Oh, man, I forgot. I Don't forget. <laughs> How are you able to make six figures from the bed this year? So you guys know that I just had a baby four weeks ago. So um, um, I didn't really want to do much, honestly. My pregnancy, I felt fat. I feel, um, y'all seen the cute part on oh, Instagram, edited, filtered, slimmed out. No, I ain't slimmed down because. <laughs> but um, uh, y'all seen the cute parts and the cute days, but it's plenty of days that I just was like, I'm not getting out of bed. I don't want to drive. My stomach is touching the steering wheel, and I just don't want to do it. So what I did was I got a condo in Buckhead, um, and I started to build content from there. So the parts of me that wasn't fat was here. So I would um, put, well, my face is fat too, but I was cool with that. 
um, a little additional contour, you know, <laughs> through the day. But um, I started filming classes, and I had already had a good um, uh, list of classes, but I started to add more classes to my website. And from there, I was doing like Instagram ads. I was paying influencers that were motivators as well, or that also did um, educational things like um, uh, blogged about entrepreneurship or things of that nature. And I paid them to post my classes. So, therefore, the one class, like I could maybe a month before Black Friday, I did a how to make ten thousand uh, dollars on Black Friday class, which last year I made ten thousand dollars on Black Friday. So I just taught them exactly what I did. These are the hashtags I used. This is how I did it. These are the steps that I took. This is the weeks that it took me to do it. And I continued to grow that class. So, so for that month, I got on live, sorry, I got on live four times a week, promoted that class. I, um, I work with different influencers to post the class and sell the class. So one thing I can tell you about me in my 2018 goal is to I want to make money without being there, without touching it at all. Like, I want to have an amazing team, which luckily, thank God, I do. I have an amazing team that can execute things for me when I'm not there. And you want to find team members that are passionate about it. So you don't want to just find a photographer. You want to find a photographer that is it's his dream, too. So when we go out and do stuff, or when I ask Los, hey, Los, can you do this? He's passionate about it, too. So it's not like waking him up and it's like, I'm coming to work. You know, when I talk to my graphic designer and I'm like, hey, I want this website designed like this. He's passionate about it, too. So he's going to give his best work instead of thinking, oh, it's a job. You know, let me just do it this way. No. So I want to be able to not have to touch everything. One thing about retail is like your customers, they want you to style them. They want you to greet them. They want you to be there. They want you to be the one grabbing the clothes, you know. And so I don't want to. I don't want to do that with me having a new baby. I want to be able to make more money without touching every single thing and being that super busy person. So class has allowed me to do that. And um, coaching, which was my coaching call. I literally sat in bed. Um, it's $99 an hour. But I was able to touch so many. You can look at my reviews. I don't like lie. Um, the, the reviews are high. But I was able to talk to so many other entrepreneurs. I, I actually talked to... Yeah, she got one of my coaching calls. The coaching call, the boom conference. <laughs> What's she doing now? What's she doing now? Awesome. So we always, she is amazing. So yes, and, and, and I did. Right and I can say it have grown our business. You told me to clean it up, clean up the website, the Instagram, and our followers going up. Yes. So it's been amazing. Yes, see? Yes. And you look amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> amazing. Um, thank you. So that is how I made six figures in bed because I was like, Coming into my store, at that time I was like closing three of my locations and I just, retail was just stressing me out. Like, not really the business portion, just more the employee portion um, was stressing me out. And I'm like, I just really want to stay in bed some days. Simone came over, you know, we, we had meetings from our bed, we made a plan, we made calendars, and I just wrote my list of clients down, what they needed from me, what I needed to do, and how I needed to execute with also, selling classes. So, if you're a hairstylist, if you are a blogger, if you are a profession at anything, literally, when I had my baby, I thought I was crazy, y'all. I didn't know. I was like, this baby cries. She's wiggling. She's fussing. I don't know what to do. Like, I bought a webinar from this girl who's like a mommy and me um, webinar -like person. And I bought her webinar. It was like $29. But it really helped me to understand how to balance, like, Wake, not sleeping at night, but then still gotta wake up and hear your clients calling. You know, I don't sit down like, girl, I ain't sleeping. You know, I got a newborn baby. Like, so it helped me balance. It it helped me balance. And uh, so, if you're a professional at anything, you can sell a class, and those classes will allow you the money to put towards what you what what else you're doing. You know, and you don't have to always be there. So when people buy my classes. A, a link gets sent to them automatically. My assistant sends a link automatically. And even with different web providers you use, it can send it automatically. So that's a way for you not to be. I know hairstylists get tired of doing every hair. You know you're only making money when your hands are working. You need to find another platform to say, okay, my hands is tired. I need to show people how to curl their own dick on hair. And then I can send, I can sell this class and get my client, you know, and manage both. So that's how I was able to make um, I'm writing a book about it, so I gave you guys the details. Um, but that's how I was able to strategically uh, make six figures in bed. Awesome. 
Okay. Okay. So you answered basically everything. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, you did. You did. But I have a question here from the audience. What tools can be used to help build loyal following? Um, I think one of the tools that I use with Cupcake Mafia is rewarding our customers that rock with us for a long time. So shouting them out, and Simone can tap on this too because she does it with her followers really well too. Um, shouting them out, reposting their images, following them, going to their page, commenting on their page, um, sending them coupon codes. Um, writing letters, like I've even sent thank you cards to my customers, surprise, you know, like, because on Shopify, which I, I believe Shopify is the best platform when it comes to e-commerce, if you're selling a lot of products, if you got one little book or, you know, something like that, you don't need Shopify, it's really expensive and you're not going to get your money's worth. But if you have a big platform where you're selling a lot of things, I believe in the Shopify and Shopify analytics will tell you, this is the customer that shopped with you the most, which is why I got up to greet one of my customers, Latasha, because she's always in here. And so that just is a great example. When you have a loyal customer, no matter what, you make them feel good. You make them, um, you let them know that you really appreciate, you know, them for shopping with you. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's it. I, and I think that don't feel guilty to post every follower because I know when you're starting a new business, it's kind of like, Oh, I know she got a blurry picture. <laughs> I know she got a blurry picture, but she bought a shirt for me, so let me post it. No, because that person that is looking at your page and thinking about buying a shirt, she's like, "Oh, I'm a, I'm too good. You know, I'm too good for that." And it could ruin where you never see Louis Vuitton posting their customers. You know, so you kind of have to think about that. But way out the good and the bad. But there's other ways to still make them feel. Great without posting that blurry picture, you know. Mm -hmm. I have a question regarding the blurriness. Um, <laughs> so I tried to make an investment for you know my business because I do fitness and my fitness videos and everything like that. And I went and I got a brand new uh, Canon camera. And one side the quality is great, but once I put it to Instagram, it's like the videos are really blurry. And I have no, I, I've seen the great videos online, but do you guys know like? Your publicist, do you guys have any? Loves <laughs> like, is there is there a certain app that people use that you guys know of to repost the the videos for the clarity? It's like it's great, but the second and I'll like edit it on iMovie, and then the second I transfer it, the second I post it on Instagram, it just comes out so blurry. And I'm like, this is not. How are you saving it on iMovie? Yeah. 4D, HD. Uh, I think it's there's like different ones, like a 540. Uh, Sometimes you can save it too high. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You don't need to do the 4D quality. Take okay. it down a couple qualities. And Lowest or even a thick color. I don't know. Oh, I don't have that problem because I got like the best camera. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but when you did have that problem. <laughs> but it depends on how you export it. I use only Final Cut Pro. So okay. the movie maker, I don't. I have Final Cut Pro, but I just. <laughs> it's the difference between that and iMovie. I have it. It came with the computer I got. Um, you said the no. difference between Final Cut and iMovie? I, I know, as far as the quality, I don't, I think it's a no, I mean, you got more options. It's, it's more for pros with Final Cut Pro. Okay. iMovie is more simple. Yeah. But. With I make iMovies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean that there's like, either you upload it to your computer and then, you know, because uh, the video, I'm like, oh, it's popping, it's dope, you know, it looks good. And then when I upload it, the quality of it just, Diminishes everything. Do you have a Mac? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I have a Mac. You can airdrop it to your phone instead of sending it to your phone. Airdrop is the best. Have, okay, airdrop it. Have you tried like researching like on YouTube or just like researching ways to get? Yeah, help? I was trying like the different apps, and so far nothing has helped. And then I saw. And, and this is just a quick real story on um, Instagram. Uh, this person that I follow, she's actually here in Atlanta. She mm -hmm. po reposted this love and hip hop. She's gonna be a love and hip hop, and she reposted a promo video for it. And a guy that's on the show with her, he commented and he was like, "You know, how did you get it so clear? Because when I posted the video, reposted it, mine came out blurry. Yours came out clear." She was mm -hmm. like, "There's a certain way you have to do it." So I'm like, okay, there really is a certain way you, you have to do it for the clarity. Mm -hmm. 
Perfect. And like when you see when you see those real advertisements and the commercials, it looks like you're looking at a TV screen, like on the commercials. But some of our videos and stuff that we post like comes out a little bit blurry. So I, I didn't know if there was like a trick or something that you guys knew. Of. Well, Just, I don't. The only thing I know yeah, is when they airdrop it to me. Because okay. yeah. when people send videos, for some odd reason, the sending process it gets all yeah. Like, yeah, but right. when they airdrop it, I've always gotten it and it works fine. Okay. I know that shape has it. Oh, I was gonna, um, I guess I'll talk to you a little bit later about it. I think. Oh, thank you. It's okay, I can. Uh, <laughs> oh, she put it on her phone so she can. Oh, so you can. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, oh, but someone can tap on what what else you use to build a loyal following. Oh, to build a loyal following. Oh, oh um, and I, I'm sorry, that was my question. And sure. the reason I asked is for someone like myself that's just starting out, um, and I only have 200 followers, mm -hmm. you know, and I battle with how much is too much to show because obviously I'm trying to reach moms. Um, how much is too much and still remain authentic and build that loyal following without being something that I'm not to build that following. Right. And I think also, what is your brand? Uh, it's a mom, I'm doing a mom blog. So cool. it's basically like the realities of, of motherhood. And since you're just starting off, find other blogs that are doing that mm -hmm. without taking their ideas and doing what they're right. doing to the T. Right. Look at them. Like she said, people were looking at her and their followings are growing. Look at other mom blogs. Look at other um, women that are mothers that are showing pictures of breastfeeding their baby. And oh, that might not work, but that picture did work of breastfeeding because it was tasteful. It was clear. It wasn't blurry. It was, you know, little stuff like that might work. Um, follow them and see what they're doing so you can add that to your page. And also, since you're new, you just have to throw stuff out and see what works now, because you don't know yet. Right. So you kind of have to try this, try that, try that. Oh, okay, A didn't work, but C worked. Let me keep doing C. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of just, it's trial and error. You're at the trial and error stage right now, since you're so new. Mm -hmm. Something else you can do is you can really start um, going to events that are specifically targeted for women and mothers and new moms and Type, but you could look at other, you know, blogging mommy, see what they post, and go to those events, connect with them women, get those emails, kind of, you know, build your own network up. So that way, it's like, okay, I can send them out, you know, email blasts about what I got going on. Hey, come visit my page because I have this, and kind of just network with them, reach out to other, you know, just mommies in general, new moms, and reach out to them so they could see what's on your page because they don't know about you yet. You know what right, I mean? Right. So. If you know, you know, people, not stealing people customers, <laughs> I'm not telling you to do that, because I would never but, want to do that. Yeah, but just like reaching out to them and kind of making yourself aware, putting yourself in places where you can connect with those people. So, thank you. But I actually have a long spot, so I can start. Yes, I have a long line. <laughs> Secretly cool. been doing stuff with them. I'm going to be doing something with it later, so I'll show okay. some pages to follow. Okay, thank you. And I think also collaborating, like reaching out to Tali and say, hey, can I interview you on Mommyhood? And that's like, what I was And I don't think, I, I mean, so, so many moms are like, so even though they may have a million followers, they're like, yeah, I want to tell you about my mommy experience, and, you know? Because, like, I'm new, so I'm researching every day. I'm, I was like, don't let her cry for two minutes, she'll get a hernia, don't do this, like, like, I'm researching every day. But that's the void that I kind of want to fill. Yeah. I was that person, I didn't have anybody to go to, so I feel like I have, like, a wealth of information that I just want to share yeah. so that other moms don't have to do all of that research. Yeah. That I can really give them the real, you know, and not I what it looks like on Instagram, how a lot of moms are. To me, that's not reality. Most moms don't wake up looking like that. You know, you're not, your baby may not be dressed. You might not have the latest stroller. You know, the real reality. So I just want to like kind of trying to get through the house. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So. And, and I, yeah. I'm always looking for information. So I think that if you, for example, if you had a blog and you came to my page and was like, oh, hey, you know, I know you have a new baby. Here's some information. Check out my blog. I would go right. because I'm already in the process of looking for new information. Right. So, and then the forums, like I have every baby app on my phone. Like I had to delete apps because now I'm so freaked out. I'm like, I need a baby app for this. I need a baby app for that. So, right. um, you know. And then find people's pages who might need you. Like she said, uh, Search the hashtag new mom yep. and go to all those girls' pages and start liking their pictures. Yep. And start commenting on their page. Sometimes you gotta find them to bring them to your page. 
go hashtag new mom and click that hashtag and go to all those new moms pages yep. and just you know bring them to your page. Okay. Thank you. So we got we have a few um, few more questions then I guess we get ready to wrap it yeah. up. Okay. All right. Someone said delegating is an issue for me. My brand is my baby and I want to protect it from everything. Mm -hmm. Guess you can call it an overprotective mom. Mm -hmm. Uh, overprotective mom issue. Are there any suggestions in delegating? Delegating is hard. Anything. This is my question. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So what specifically? So like just um you always feel like no one can do it like you. I'm sure like with moms, I'm not a mom, but with the moms in the room, like no one can, you know, call to her and make her feel comfortable like you. No one can do this and the other. So I have an executive assistant that does certain things, but it's like, instead of me delegating those things, I'm like, well, nah, I'll just do it myself because I think I do it a little bit better. Or she's good at deadlines, but it's like, sometimes I don't know what I should delegate to her, you know? And then I look at the talents and, See, okay, well, this is this person's strength. So these are this person's weaknesses or whatever. But then I still end up not necessarily micromanaging because I'm not that person, but more so like just, you know, just being real particular about it. You know what I mean? Like I want it to be a certain way. Like what um, Simone, B. Simone was saying, like you want the video to be right. Like one freckle, no, do, redo it, you know, whatever. So like just delegating and knowing, I know personally that I can't do it all myself, obviously. And I'm coming into that. It's like, you know, that growth stage where it's like, it's getting icky and it's, you know, <laughs> questionable and like, okay, you're not gonna be able to do this. So you have to delegate it to somebody. So just how do you deal with it? And um, who are the people that you usually de uh, delegate to? And how do you find those people? Mm -hmm. um, well, me, I have 36 employees. So delegation is important. Mm -hmm. And I find myself, I get so mad at myself because my graphic designer is a very prompt and he comes in and he wants his list. And sometimes I just forget to send him the list. So I like wake up and I'm scrambling. What do I need done? What do I need done? Instead, of, So what I now realize is prepare the list for a week schedule. You don't have to send him the list every night. Prepare his Monday, Tuesday. So you need to delegate and then you need to, when they give it back to you, give them feedback. What I realize is that everybody, what I'm thinking he will tell you all the time, Skittles, we don't know what you're thinking. I'm like, why are y'all shooting the boutique with the brand? Like, what? They was like, well, you just said do the shoot. <laughs> so, I really, you can't penalize people when you're not very specific. Right. Sometimes you need to be extremely specific saying, I want this shot like this, done this way, at this time. And be extremely specific. So, then when they mess up, you can say, okay, it was in the email that... I asked for it to be done this way. But if you just say, shoot the blue dress, you might have 20 blue dresses. I, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, you know the new blue, blue dress, dress. Right. not the blue dress from five <laughs> years ago. Right. But I can't penalize them because they don't think like I think. I just say, well, thank you for shooting all the blue dresses. <laughs> we only needed the first one. But now you know next time to, but you have to delegate. You cannot do everything right. you cannot do everything and i at one point in time i was with my business i was like i'm gonna buy a camera i'm gonna be my own photographer i'm gonna set up my own photo studio and then it came to the lighting part and i'm like okay on youtube trying to figure it out and i'm just like yeah this doesn't work because the it's the time that you're taking right. to do this you could be doing something that you're good exactly. at so hire somebody that is good at some things i hate accounting i hate numbers i hate math i just love the money part that's it and so I was trying so hard. Okay, I'm gonna get um, quick books. Quick books for <laughs> self-employed. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. Messing it all up. <laughs> so you just need to hire somebody that's good at that thing and just delegate it to them. And it's, and, and understand that no, it's not gonna be as what you want because it's not you doing it. Mm -hmm. But what I do need to be able to trust them. Like my team, I could trust them. I could trust that I don't come in for three weeks straight and I tell them what to do and I can see it being done, you know? Mm -hmm. So you have to find that one good person you like, I can trust her for this, this, and this, but I gotta do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And you can't, just because you can trust them to do your Instagram, doesn't mean you can trust them to cook for your food, watch your kids, and I fell short of that. Like, I've hired a sister, I'm like, this girl is bomb, she's doing everything, she's organizing stores, she's doing this, she's watching my dog, and then it's like, 
But no, Skittle, she can't plan your baby shower. She can't <laughs> do this. She can't do this. And just because she's good at this thing doesn't mean you can just delegate everything to her. Right. Because just like you're not good at everything, that person isn't either. Right. You know? Right. Thanks. No problem. Should ad prices be similar <coughs> to competitors? That, oh, that was my question. Is that what it says? I, yes. Okay. Should ad prices be similar to your competitors? competitors? Yeah. So you're saying people um, use your page to do ads? Right. So that's something I'm trying to get into in terms of <coughs> income. And sometimes people ask, well, what do you charge? And then if I set up the price, they'll be like, oh, well, a similar page for a similar number is only charging maybe half of that. And I don't respond. I'm like, well, then ask us on that page. Because <laughs> right. I just feel like, but maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Maybe I should be where my competitors are. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Your price is good. I think that goes back to like who are your competitors. I think that goes back to that. Like you know how Skittles was saying, my competitor is not such and such. Mine is you know Louis Vuitton or whoever. Like I think that goes back to that. So if you're trying to be on that level, then your price is your price. You know. But if you're you know if you are trying to take out all the, I wouldn't even call them competitors, but people that are doing the same things as you, then it's like maybe research more so like what they're doing and kind of, you know, mimic your numbers off of them. But I don't have my clients do that. I'm just telling you like personally because I try not to spend so much time focusing on what other people are doing anyway. But I will just give you that option. Like I think always on a larger scale. So like if my competitor is Mac and I'm a beauty brand, I know if I wanted to add on Mac, it's not gonna be fifty dollars. You know, it's gonna be two hundred thousand. <laughs> so yeah, I think you should stick with your price is your price. As long as you have the analytics and the numbers to back up what your advertiser, you know, wants, then I think you should stick with it. You know, we charge a lot <laughs> for our ads, but people be like, oh, well, Father Larry charges this much, and this blog charges this much. Well, we charge 1500 but we have, you know, the analytics. We have a media kit showing, like, a breakdown of what our followers are like, like, down to how much they probably make per year and all this, art, you know, intricate stuff. So, what is it called? A media kit, right? Mm -hmm. Um, get a media kit done. Do you have one? No, no, I'm just, I'm just you know, I kind of just fell into this. So oh, definitely get a media <laughs> kit done, for sure. How do you do that? What do you get a media kit done? Oh, publicist. Oh, publicist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, publicist. But yeah, you can just get a media kit done. So, EPK, electronic press yeah. kit, same thing. And just break down all your analytics and all your numbers. It just shows your value. Yeah. Okay. Right? So, do we have any other questions? It's okay. She has one. Yes. Go ahead. Shut. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, okay, this is a question for her. Um, how does she, because she wants to do more of like blogging, like WordPress, and like taking like her Instagram account to like make money on a website or something like that? How you can like advertise and stuff? How can she do that? Um, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> She can do, um, well, I only know it from like the shaving perspective, not my personal brand, because I don't, that's not how I function. You know, well, for, her, for her style of page, it's not her personal stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, she's more like an inspiration page, and she gets like people to like post on her page, if that makes sense, and she drives business to their page, if that makes sense. So, um, she wants to know how can she like take the following and like, her impressions are pretty high, like, you know, the kind of views that she gets or whatever like that. And she wants to transfer it over to like a blog or a website. Like our personal website. Yeah, like how do you? What you have to start doing is giving them snippets on Instagram, but for yeah. them to see everything, yeah. they have to go to the website. Yeah. Okay, so just put so the give link them bio. exclusive stuff on your personal website. Mm -hmm. Give them the the bread and the butter on the personal website. Tease them on Instagram, right. mm -hmm. and lead them over to your website. Um, that's what me and Desi actually started doing. The guy I do comedy videos with. We'll do a one minute on Instagram, but we'll we'll do an actual three minute video, which will drive them to our YouTube. Mm -hmm. To see the whole video, you have to go to my YouTube because now I'm trying to get my YouTube subscribers up. Mm -hmm. Same thing with your website. 
And so, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. I was just going to reiterate that. And do you have to reach out to advertisers to get them to, to advertise on your blog, or it just comes automatically? Sometimes you do. Mm -hmm. But um, you can do AdSense on your personal website. I didn't know that. On YouTube, how people get oh, money on YouTube okay. through AdSense, you can have AdSense, sign up on AdSense through your personal well, like, website. Stuff, yep. Like, oh. So you can, you can do that on your personal website. It's called AdSense. A-D-S-E-N-S-E. Okay. Yep. And you now, so like for your page, you can just post a picture of the pillows on the couch right. and say to see the full room, go to the blog. Yes, go to my blog. And then um, also with your Instagram, I know that you don't want to like fill your Instagram up with ads, but you can be using that as um, a platform to get paid from it. So say if I had a furniture company. And I'm looking to get more people to buy my couches or to buy my furniture right, yeah. or whatever. You can start DMing furniture stores, DMing like paint companies right. and say, oh, you know, I posted uh, this picture that had your paint on the wall and it got 500,000 impressions, you know, whatever, whatever. I would love to work with you guys to advertise because I didn't tag you. Imagine if I would have tagged you in that post, how many people would have been running to buy the paint, you know? Or run into by the couch. Look at you know. So you should start reaching out as well. And uh, even if it starts with just like, oh yeah, okay, we'll get you a hundred dollars, and then say, okay, well now I can post ten pieces of furniture on my page a month for this month, you know. And then make sure they do a contract. I, mean, I, also, I, don't do no. quick. Oh, right. I was gonna say also offer it from the beginning. Like yeah. when people reach out to you for Instagram, like I want to advertise with you. You can also say you can also I also do advertisement on my website, mm -hmm. and you can say or in addition to Instagram, you can advertise on my website for this price. So just go ahead and start offering the packages now, and that way when you start doing your banners like on your um, personal blog page, people will already see that, so they'll start seeing that you already do it, even mm -hmm. though it's coming from your Instagram customers, mm -hmm. but they'll already see it on your website, so you can, you know, I do have a big them. furniture company designer that did reach out to me and wants me to be like one of the affiliates, and mm -hmm. so they, I did sign up for that, and so I have to like make a, a blog or a website now to do the affiliate links and get paid that way. Right. Um, there's also um, Instagram and they have like this swipe up feature, like the baby baby story. Mm -hmm. I have, I, is it still only for verified accounts? No, 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 no it's a business account. Yeah, you have to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can put the, your uh, website on there and when people are viewing your stories, they can swipe up and go. Okay, I have a, okay, sorry, last question. Okay, for her, <laughs> this is for her. Okay. Is this your mom? Yes, my mom. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. Mom. I'm her manager. I'm yeah. taking my... You like sure to get this together. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, you got to be making the money in the house. You know? So, okay. Like, okay, so she wants to stay, like, what is it called? Anonymous. And she's been getting a lot of people attacking her, basically trying to, like, out her and stuff like that. She wants to work with, like big influencers because a lot of them follow her and stuff like that. How can she actually work with them without outing herself? How can she go to these places like furniture places and work with the furniture places without having her in Say my client. My client. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. My client. I do it all the time. That, in the space that she it's like white dominated. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Hi, my client. Okay. but how Runs this page. You know, unfortunately, she's in Italy right now. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> representing her. If she went to like um, Restoration Hardware to like do a story for them or like yeah. something like that, will she go as herself? Yes. Yeah. No. She, I mean, it depends. If you want to go as yourself, then of course you have to continue to be yourself. Right. But if you want to just say, oh, you know, the block the company sent me here or yeah I'm, I'm Send the <laughs> no or yeah or she you know she's um you, you don't always have to come as yourself you can be a worker like i was for cooking mafia for a very long time um you yeah you can be a worker you can ha hire interns you can hire a face you know it's plenty of different things or you can do me and i always say my client like people call me say hi skills available and i don't know what um yeah, hi, like my client is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not available right now. So, you know, you don't have to always. But Talia has to go, um, like, now. I'll start working in a few yeah. minutes. Yes. So, um, <laughs> we're going to take a picture really quickly so she can leave. Um, I'm so sorry. No, you're fine, you're fine. We're going to answer the rest of your questions, though. <laughs> <laughs> Take a hundred.
hundred. <laughs> oh, for y'all that don't like taking pictures, you know the shutter thing on the iPhones where you just press the button and take all those pictures. Oh yeah, that's an like easy way. It takes like a thousand dollars. <laughs> See how long it takes for one picture? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm going to It'll be posted. <laughs> I know, I'm going to hear Let me get you all. Yeah. Yeah. Like, don't be too close. I'm going to have to edit my. <laughs> 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 oh, there's no picture. I just came out to that You had a question? Let me answer her question because she keep she had her hand up. Oh, okay. Um, I was asking like uh, I want to do Instagram, but um, I find it hard to do it like because I want it to be my face. Um, like doing photo shoots and stuff. Like, how do you incorporate that? So I'm in school. I have a job and stuff. You know, you said you were doing here. Um, what you're doing originally, like. And you don't wear makeup every day and stuff. I don't do that either. So how, like, do you shoot once a month or? Like, no. <laughs> I mean, I, once a week. I mean, she tries to keep me on schedule, which I'm not gonna lie, I don't have a schedule right now. I'm very spontaneous. Like. I, I go with how I feel. Like today I woke up, the only reason I have not makeup because I had to be here, you know, look presentable. But if I if this was regular day, I'm like, it's not sunny outside. I'm gonna stay in the house today. You know, I kind of go with, I'm very spare of the moment. Mm -hmm. So you should probably, I'm saying all to say, don't do that. Get on the schedule, <laughs> try to try to have a schedule. Like she'll be like, okay, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we need to take Instagram pictures. Tuesday, you're gonna post a comedy video. Um, uh, Friday is Friday, you post a freestyle video, so they still know you do music freestyle Friday. So you kind of have a schedule for for your page. But um, I'm kind of sporadic, so I try to when I do have on makeup. Okay, I feel good today. Let me do three outfits today, so I just have you know pictures for the next three days. So you kind of. I don't, I don't know if that answered your question. But you have to, schedule honestly, you schedule. have to be your brain too. Yeah, like, yeah, schedule it. I'm bad to speak be on this because I don't leave my house without makeup. Like, that's just been That's me. just who she is. Yeah, that's just me. That's the schedule. I mean, someone is just like, why are you dressed up? I'm like, I'm just getting dressed. She'd be like, why aren't you dressed up? <laughs> <laughs> the lady at Walmart just noticed you. You look crazy. She's like, I don't care. <laughs> but you, you have to make it a part of your brand. If it was me and I was, if Simone didn't know who she was, she would be a new person. Because I would have made her be a new person. She's like, Skittles, I don't have to have on makeup in all my videos. I'm like, okay. She's like, I don't have to have my hair done. I'm like, Simone, 50 Cent posted a video of you. Your hair it looks crazy. <laughs> she was so pissed. I said, I didn't know he was going to be posted. It's <laughs> crazy. Not a brush. Not the edge control. Every time I turn this way in the video, the back of my head, I said, I don't care. I got a million views. She's like, you look insane. Like, that's why they love it, because I look like a foot. Because in my mind, I'm thinking corporate brand. I'm thinking bigger brands. Yeah. Like, she's thinking how cover Yeah, like, yeah. All right, I gotta go through. Yes, oh my gosh, okay, I'll wear it. Tag it. No, please. Don't tell me shit, I'll talk to you. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 So, so, if y'all want my number, you can get it. It's on my. It's on me. Thank you. Pass it around. So. You know, it's up to you and your brand. I love people. I love my friends that get on live and just be brushing their teeth and just talking and doing things. That doesn't work for me and my brand. Well, I don't even know because I'm not even willing to try it. <laughs> so, but for me, I'm not comfortable, you know, and I think you have to be comfortable. And who you yeah, are. Yeah, and who you are. Like, someone will get, she will be in the middle of the bed, like, hair crazy, like, everything, you know? And that's just not me. That's, so you have to be comfortable. Like there's days when she's like, okay, yeah, I'm going to this event looking like this, or I'm going here looking like this. And it's like, but that's where she's comfortable in it, and that's her brand. Mm -hmm. So I just think that ultimately when it comes to the content and making money from it, it has to be something that you can do over and over and over again. And if I walked on one day and just started to do live with no makeup on, like I would, first of all, I would be completely uncomfortable. Um, and then second of all, I wouldn't be able to do that all the time. I would be faking it, you know, or if I wanted to talk a certain way or get to a certain audience, you know, I would be faking it. So if it had to be me, you have to do what's genuinely you. If you wake up and you like, I'm Tom Boy Swag, that kind of has to be the audience that you attract from that. Mm -hmm.
just stay consistent. Mm -hmm. So I try to blend in, like, you know, the no makeup stuff. It just works for my brand. It's comedy. Yes. And people, people want to know her. I look crazy. It's already funny because I look like it a crazy. And then what I'm saying is funny, so it works with my brand. Her brand isn't comedic. Like, there's no reason. If people laugh at her, it's not because she's joking. It's because she looks crazy. Yeah. So she's like, no, I'm not a joke. I'm not a comedian. So it goes with my brand. My brand is comedy and being goofy and funny. So I, I try to blend both, you know. And you have, to, you have to know that some things that we post are not helping you sell. It's a distraction. So, like, to me, if I was to post with no makeup and no one has ever seen me, like with no makeup on, it would be a distraction. So I'm trying to sell this class. Y'all just woke up. You know, I'm trying to sell this class. I'm like, Bitch, you look a mess. We never see you like this. Put some makeup on. So you have to think about the distractions. You know, like it was funny because one day I almost ran out of gas and I was like, I should Snapchat this. I was like, but it would be a distraction because people would be so talking about, oh, Skittle G wagging around out of gas or whatever. Then, um, I, what am I gaining from that? Am I gaining any coaching calls? Am I gaining any clients? Am I gaining whatever? Simone can do that because it's so available. I, mean, I was like, on the other hand, I ran out of gas in the whole 15 minute video is on YouTube and I was on the side of the road with a half ponytail looking crazy. That's, but it's relatable to her audience. my brand, yes. you know what I'm saying? So you got to know when it's like a distraction or when it's um, your brand or it's your authenticity. It's the perfect conversation for the question I have. Um, so I'm, I have a prosthetic facelift, so I'm an amputee. I just started a blog on YouTube um, just about amputees and the daily life, wow. but I want to grow my brand. So I'm not sure exactly how to get different audiences to come to my brand because, of course, everybody's not an amputee, but I still want to be relatable. So I'm like, how can I mix the two and build my brand? I have something. Go. Okay. <laughs> um, have any of you guys heard of Gary V? He's a yeah. white guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is his main things that stand out to me that he says, don't worry about the numbers. Exactly. Do not count the subscribers, don't count the followers. It's important, but that's going to come. You focus on putting out content that you want to be out in the world. You focus on that, and the people that are or you're attracting are gonna come to your page. Don't, don't focus on, oh, I'm trying to, I want amputees to be here, I want everybody to be here, I want white people here, I want white people. You put out the content that you wanna put out. Those, that audience will come when they find that content. So don't focus too much on them right now, you just focus on what you want to be out. Whatever you want your image to be. So if you want it to be focused, you want it to be more clean cut, a little more, less vulgar, I cuss a lot. So she gets on me like, I'm not gonna get any endorsements. <laughs> no, like, you know, but I, I curse. You know, I'm, I'm trying to tone it down, but I'm really not. I curse. I do this. I do that. If you if you don't want that to be your image, just, you focus on what you want your image to be. You might cuss in real life, but maybe on YouTube you don't want to curse because you want certain endorsements. You focus on your image, and all those people they'll find you. Okay. Don't focus on trying to find you know trying to find them in that way. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You. Whatever content you want in the world, focus on pumping that content out. And being and be transparent uh, with other people that are not like amputees. So like, oh, this is a day in the life of me, or how to do makeup, or how I am a mom. Like I would just want to look because I'm like, oh, she's a mom. How can I complain about being a mom and I have both? You know, so I would want to watch things like that. So. You should just do it for real life, like your real life, oh, this is me doing my makeup, my hair. You never know which one of those videos is going to get shared the most. Sure. And that's what I do. I have me a rock climbing, me riding a bike, me wow. doing my makeup, hair. Awesome. Like, I have all walks of life, but I don't want that's it good. to be too broad. Like, I don't... I kind of want but your life, if your life is broad, yeah, yeah. so it's, bo you, it's vlogs, right? You're vlogging. Right. That's fine. That's okay. perfect for for you to vlogging is vlogging. One day I'm vlogging. I'm doing a photo shoot. The next day I'm vlogging. I'm in bed looking crazy. Right. So one day I look like a celebrity, and the next day I look normal, like a regular girl. You know what I'm saying? So vlogging shows your everyday life, whatever you're doing in life. Okay. So that's fine. That's what YouTube is for. So it can show from ten to one, all in between. Oh, yeah. Vlogging is fine for that. I try to get my Facebook followers now. Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Our last question, Keisha. And then at the end, we're just going to network. Mm -hmm. I want you guys, you good? Okay. So, oh, let me record y'all. Hold on. <laughs> Say, Skittles is the best on the <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
because Alicia Moore is probably going to do another one of these in another city. And I think people were kind of worried, like scared to to know about, like she was, she was like, I don't know. Because like we did a vision board party yesterday and people were buying tickets right away because it's like a vision board. But when, when it's like, I think, I don't know why it's like the entrepreneur community is so nervous when it comes to investing in themselves. Like this information that you guys got from Talia, Talia doesn't do many panels about the share room, you know? Like, Naya doesn't give the information that she gave out. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's about the relationships that I built. And I literally was like, y'all about to do this fan up for me <laughs> and give, my, give these people these jewels because I wish I had them when I first started. Like, I would be so much bigger, so much better if I would have had the information that I have now and the information that these girls have just from starting. So, um, you know, I want you guys to be a testimony and... Please um, comment, please tag I am the trending topic on your Instagram and say like this panel was great, this panel was worth it, what you learned from it, so that maybe someone that's following you will see it in the next city we go to and say, I have to be a part of it because you know Cache posted it and said it was amazing or Keisha posted it and said it was amazing. So did you guys feel like this class was good? Absolutely. Very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited because every time I have done a coaching call with you, everything we have done with you, it's like it takes us to the next level, and I learned something different. And I kept thinking, like, okay, I did everything, all your different classes. And I'm like, well, what more can she say? I'm like, okay, well, she got a panel full of people, but you still said something different than you said through all the other calls I have done. So I thank you. Thank you. You're amazing. So. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so. I want to say thank you um, for the panel and I am so thankful for my relationship with Skittles and if I yes. could just say um, we came in here today the content was amazing but most of all I brought with me um, some phenomenal ladies because as the um, founder of the Love and Legs Foundation I have the Legless Divas um, that I'm working on and these ladies are part of the Legless Divas so most of all if I could just leave you with a, just plant a seed within you and I just want to let you know that it's really not that bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we can do anything through Christ who strengthens us. Um, and just being focused. And when you have a vision and it's yours, just know that that vision is yours. A promise is a promise, even though it may not come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I believe that once he gives you the vision and it's yours, you just have to push and work towards it and just really trust it. Right. So if I could just leave that. Brands are going to be bigger. Yes. No more blurry images. Right? <laughs> Y'all going to post more. Yes. Shay. Oh. <laughs> I'm working on I'm working on This is my little Instagram famous baby, but <laughs> she is so shy. But she's bomb. Yeah. And I love her. <laughs> so, you guys network, please, please, please network, pass each other cards, numbers, follow each other on Instagram, and please follow I Am The Trend Topic on Instagram, um, Alicia Moore on Instagram. Give it up for her for putting this together. She's crying, she flew up here just to do this, so. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. So, it's cold. It <laughs> <laughs> looks beautiful, though. Thank you. Oh, I just need, oh, I need one more video. Oh, I'm just having to say. If you, if you guys don't mind, one, two, three, we're going to say, I am the trending topic, okay? Oh, all right. I'm going to go. If I am the trending topic. I am the trending topic. Oh, sorry. Can you, Alicia well, and Simone, y'all turn around. Oh. <laughs> I know, I have to turn Should we stand up? What do we say? Love up. I am the so trending topic. Um, yep, I am the trending topic. One, two, three, go. I am the trending topic. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. I have to take family Christmas pictures, guys. Okay. So my dog and my son. <laughs> Oh my god.